Okay, well, let's try this for a change. Anyone hear me? We can hear you now. Yeah, the yes. third time's a charm. Um, can I be heard? Yeah, nobody wants to hear you, though. Yeah. Um, well, you, no. Yeah, so, so I, I, you know, you, eventually I'll figure this stuff out. You know, after a few years, I'll probably get to the point where I can actually do this without a producer. Uh, oh, it's too loud now. What do you guys want? First you can't hear me, and now it's too loud? Take your pick, man. All right, we're good. Okay, they're good. So, uh, oh, there's an echo? I don't have an echo. I think the echo was just someone on uh, not muting their stream. Oh, okay. So Because I had that problem, too. Anyways, uh, my third time saying this, I'm going to paraphrase. It's Sunday, not Saturday. We tried to do it on Saturday. Things came up on Sunday now. Drink, don't drink. Uh, Cheshire Power, no worky, and she'll be in later. So Cheshire was going to basically run this, but unfortunately her power went out. God stepped in and said no, and uh, now I'm here because I was not going to do it tonight. But I guess I'm going to be here for at least a while until Cheshire gets here. And we'll go for there. Anyways, uh... Mikey's here, Nikki's here, Brandon's here, Sweet's here, Depper Dinosaur's here. Anybody else want to come in? That's fine. I get the link out to numerous people. Because this particular Zoom does not have a waiting room, uh, you're going to have to ask for the link. And, yeah, give the, uh, give the link. Actually, message Mikey on Twitter. He's going to be the gatekeeper. And Padme, he'll give you a link there, okay? So follow Mikey. I got Padme good way to get, already. What's, what's that? I got Padme already. Okay. It's a good way to get Mikey more subs on Twitter anyways, because nobody knows who the hell he is. Oh, right. There's a reason for that. Yeah. Good or bad things. Uh, so not really a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, like I said, this is why I'm going to have Cheshire kind of kind of do her thing to do a non-hostile takeover. But uh, I, I will go over a couple of different points, I guess. Uh, Cheshire and I were recently on the Free Thinker podcast. That was the day. It hasn't aired yet. I guess it will air tomorrow or the next day. That was fun. And also Landon and I did a podcast with Planner Walk on nuclear energy, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, that was cool. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, that was also with Fight the Flat Earth. And uh, what else? Uh, well, that, at least on my end, that's about it. anything going on your end. And then uh, people can, I don't know, join at will. And we'll just figure out the hell we're going to talk about tonight because I ain't got nothing planned. This is why I was like, Chess, are you just taking? I actually asked a friend of mine, Michael Garrett, to run it. He does drones, and he was going to run an episode to promote his drone stuff, but he had to work 13 hours today. So, Super Chat, My Unfinished Journey, $5. Loon Juice, High Sard. Wait, Loon Juice, Hard Cider. I'm a strong atheist, but weak drinker. Hmm. That's like that. Yeah. Yeah, I threw that out earlier. I don't think we know enough about what everyone watching is drinking. Do you want to know that? All right. Well, we got Jasmine in the uh, live chat, too, so we got to know what she's drinking. Um, I'll get her the link. Sarah's email. in there. I don't know what she's drinking. Sarah? Sarah, what are you drinking in the live chat? By the way, I didn't. I, she has the link, too. So, well, let's start it here. Mikey, what are you drinking? Um, Rum and Coke, because that's what the night called See, for. you get it. You just get me. <laughs> Out of all these people, you, you're like the rules. only one that gets me. And we're like soulmates, man. We're, we're, I, I swear, we're probably born under the same rising moon and retrograde motion of Mercury. I about to say Mercury and Jupiter were both in retrograde when we were conceived. And then like Pluto was in contrograde. And that was a whole different thing. Ooh, now you're using big words. I'm glad you liked it because I made it up. I'm yeah. going to say it right now <laughs> before, before I say anything more. Sweet heathen, you are looking hot. That's H A W T or H O T. I think it's she looks, H -W -T. Uh, Well, here's the I thing. She... See, Sweet got a new camera and now she's unstoppable. <laughs> oh, right. No, it literally is really hot here, though. It's been a brutal few days. I like that new camera, by the way. I think she looks very intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> beat, beat your old one that was like three frames. What was that, Mikey? I think you look intelligent. It's the glasses, right? Are you saying she didn't look intelligent before, Mikey? <laughs> She's looking more intelligent. Mm -hmm. We're sapios around here, so that yeah. It's going to be interesting. Wasn't like she was looking dumb Steve, before. Are you, Steve, are you now basing her intelligence on the way she looks? Well, pretty much. I'm a superficial motherfucker, man. <laughs> when are you going to not realize this shit, man? It doesn't take much for me, man. Glasses, pigtails, I'm down, you know. 
Wait a minute. <laughs> now she's a, all she needs is a book in her hand. You put like Stranger in a Strange Land by Heinlein in her hand. That's that's uh, right there. That's all right, book. noted. And yeah. get on Amazon. Have you, have you read it? It's a great book. It's one, it's I'm like, severely behind with so many things I want to read. It should be required reading. Uh, Stranger in a Strange Land is brilliant. Um, it's about uh, not really to give away any short end. under the stick. Honestly, have, have you read it? I mean, no spoilers, but it's basically a guy that's born on Mars and he starts his own religion. <laughs> That whole shelf is almost all sci-fi. Most yeah. of it, Asimov, Heinlein, and Frank Herbert. Frank I'm Herbert, like the du- like Dune. Dune is my mm. second favorite book of all. Yeah, time. I've, re- I've read most of the Dune series. I've read every single book. I even pre-ordered some of the ones that his son and uh, Kevin Anderson are, have done. Yeah, you, we we grope each other. Uh, Two dollars from Remember Sammy Jenkins. You're looking hot too, Steve. Wrench me. <laughs> Uh, should I give a wrench to remember Sammy Jenkins? Uh, mm-hmm. I know Leroy Jenkins. Who's Sammy Leroy! Jenkins? Leroy! At least I got chicken. Now, see, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good debate to be had. People may not know what the hell we're talking about, but it, hey, it doesn't matter. Did he say, at least I ain't chicken, or at least I got chicken? Now, I think he said, at least I got chicken, because I think he had like food that had been spoiled for ages um, or something. Because when when he was res- when we came back in, in like the um, the Burning Crusade or something like that, uh, and he didn't know what the hell was going on, he, he had old chicken. D- do you agree, Mikey? Or do you think he said at least I'm not chicken? How mad would you be if I just knew the quote, Leroy Jenkins? You you fail. You failed miserably. <laughs> I'm with Steve on this one. I I heard at least I got chicken. Yeah, I I think so too. It makes a lot more sense now. That most of that was scripted, but I don't think that end part was scripted. Koyasa no, agrees with do, you. Do, you, do you know where that's from, Mikey? No. No, you don't. I'm I'm a very specific kind of nerd. Okay, so, so let, let's nerd you out a little bit more. Back in the day, World of Warcraft, there was a uh, part. Uh, there was a, a instance called uh, that was Black Temple Spiral. I think that was what that was from. And there was a part where you had to go through these whelps that was hatchlings and eggs, and you had to do. When you're doing when you're doing a, 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 an instance, there's a specific way each instance has to be done for strategy, or you wipe the party. Everybody dies. Right, right. And what they 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 there's this group called Pals Forever. I think that the name of the group was or Pal, It was a Pals Forever, and they made this video, which was comical because they had scripted it. Was all it wasn't supposed to be real, but they all went up to to Black Spire Tower or whichever. Um, whatever instance it was, it was where the rookery was and <laughs> they're pairing it out and they're preparing it out like methodically. Like one person's like, well, I bought 10 potions and we're at, we have this DPS and if you do this and you do that, and they're all going really, really myopically of how they're going to take down this boss. Because back then, especially it was very difficult. It still is nowadays. Yeah. And, and one of the characters just runs in there shouting Leroy Jenkins and just, just aggros every every whelp in there and just wipes the entire party and kills them off. And the last thing he says is, at least I got chicken. <laughs> you know, cursing them out. They're like, what the hell are you doing, Leroy? Damn you, Leroy. Yeah, he just runs in and just kills everybody. So now that's con- considered to be doing Leroy Jenkins when you just run in, suicide everybody, and kill everybody off. Uh, Cajun Drift to Five Dollars, Foundation Trilogy. I read Foundation Trilogy in Realm. That was Isaac Asimov. I did read that trilogy. Yes, that was the Psycho Historians. I know. I believe it or not, I read with as a kid. I really liked Foundation, but I kind of wish he'd kept it separate from his robot universe. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap and stuff like that. And I, the thing with the the Foundation series was that is one of those things that you have to read probably four times to even try to even understand it. It was very, very complicated. Boy, that I, we went from we went from World of Warcraft to Isaac Asimov. So we didn't even get to what people's drinking yet. Not everyone's been saying like Tide Pods. Um, yeah, you're not having Tide Pods, are you? That's what they're saying in the chat. I see <laughs> Nicholas Suter, bleach and Tide Pod cocktail. I don't know what's wrong with Nicholas Suter. Uh, anyone been, know this he, guy? He hasn't been the same for a while. I have no idea who that yeah. is. Four hundred dollars, no. <laughs> yeah. Sweet Ethan's never even heard of him. You know what I mean? He's, so he's, he's not that well known. He wrote a couple books. That, he, it's got to be a nobody. Been different ever since uh, ever since I pointed out that all of his Bible means wrong. He didn't I take forgot. it well. No, <laughs> just instant explosion, just uh, all over. 
By the way, uh, I'm going to be pretty like sure, messaging sure a few people. Pass, I'm pretty but... sure he'll do 95% of the work on my channel and take it over. Hmm. Mr. Uh, Serious, <laughs> Liberty Brew, what is that? Anybody know what that is? I'm guessing beer. Is it beer? I'm uh, streaming live. I just sent you an email. I, I think it's your older account, so check both to, to join. Um, what are you drinking, Chris? You don't you don't, you don't drink anything in I'm, I'm Oh, it's anything. a Mountain Dew. I've been... I, I, yeah, I, I've gross. been taking a little bit of a break from alcohol. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm just drinking water. So this is just pure tap water, actually. Sure it is. Sure it is. I mean, his technical name is vodka, but... <laughs> <laughs> Potato water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they call it water in Russia. The, the word for uh, vodka the Russians... in Russia is the same, I think. Is that not the case? They're very similar. Uh, vodka is vodka or vodka, vodka? depending on exactly which... Uh... Like, uh, what is it, dialect you're going for? And water is exactly the same, except there's no K in the middle. Vodka. Vo so it's just, it's just Voda or Voda. Vo vo vodka. Yeah, whatever. No, it's, it might, no this is, it is just water. They're extremely similar. Yeah, what are you drinking, Dapper? Uh, right now, I'm actually not drinking anything. I just got in from the road where I was drinking a little bit too much caffeine so as not to crash. So I just I've, had a five-hour drive. I've been there and done that, actually, yeah. I don't yeah, like I just, road trips that much when I'm driving. I, I'm in uh, Nevada for work for like every weekday for the indefinite future. So every Sunday is a, a nice long drive. And Nikki, what are you drinking? Um, I have uh, this. Okay. It's a plum lemongrass. Yeah, it sounds that has yeast in it. Yeah. The, and then I actually got this. Cheap. Oh, yeah, there you go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I saw you picture that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I got mine somewhere, so but I'm not drinking scotch tonight. Mm -hmm. It is about ridiculous. Seconds. It's good, though, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is you wrong with you? Alcoholic stew. You don't think that's good scotch? It is smooth. <sighs> you it know is what? smooth. I'll give you that. No yeah. aftertaste. No aftertaste really, at all. Really right? I, right? <laughs> finish so that, finish that off, and your next finger of it, you'll be like, this is good. The, it's yeah. always it's always the second finger that's better, I hear. All right? Okay. So this is good to chase with, though. Is it? Is it? You chase it with yeah. beer. You, wait, you chase chasing scotch with beer. What kind Cider. of drinker are you, Nikki? You don't do that. That's just wrong. I'm gonna get messy here. Fine. She's bit. a heathen too. Yeah, I like that. She's an alcoholic want. heathen, is what she is. <laughs> Certain things you just don't do. That's one of you don't chase scotch with beer. Everybody knows that. Man, if Landon was here, and Landon, by the way, is on Drunken Peasants tonight. But if Landon was here, uh, AC Castillo, two dollars. Hey man, any love for Andy? Where's the Martian? I didn't see it, nor did I read it. I'm sorry, but I did read. I did read the, the Martian Chronicles, but that was by. Um, uh, oh gee, uh, who wrote the Motion Card? Ray Badbury, yeah. And I also read the Illustrated Man, although I don't remember much from that one. That was a long time ago. And I read um, uh, H.G. Wells' Time Machine, the original, like oh. with the the, yeah, the, the troglodytes that. and stuff. Mitty, no. I used to I used to really love sci-fi. I had a, a collection of like short stories and uh, like Moon is a Harsh Mistress and Blow Ups Happen, Widgets, Rassets, and Boffs. Yeah, I mean, just the whole, the whole Hugo Award thing everyone everything that won a hugo award i wanted to read brandon what are you drinking i have waddle waddle Water. i'm good with waddle and uh sweet heathen are you having alcoholic spirits tonight i am with just cheap red wine pinot noir that's pinot noir that's okay well that's nothing wrong with that don't don't underestimate cheap red wine gets the oh, no, job it's done fine. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have you don't have to go all fine and scotch like on us Scott uh, ba ba uh, Scott Bun, ten dollars Australian. It's way too early in Perth to drink. Do its coffee all the way. Uh, no, it's never too early to drink. That's uh, actually a law in in California. Uh, that uh, if you're in your house, you can drink anytime you want. <laughs> it's never too early. You can always do both at the same time. There are plenty of spirits that go well in coffee. Yeah. Hey, look, it's Padme. What's up? What do you? What do you? What, what were you having? Yeah, I'm not actually a cat. It's I know it's shocking. Yeah. Just show us. Wait, did, did show us the Padme? Didn't you temporarily get shut down? Shut down? Did you? Did your account get suspended? Which for... far? No. <laughs> no. Was it, who? Whose account got suspended? Wasn't yours? Um, oh, it's Puddles. No, Puddles account got suspended. Oh, Puddles. Okay. Yeah, Puddles account got suspended. Yeah. Definitely. Sounds like Puddles. Yeah. Account on what? Uh, oh, on Twitter. Oh. Yeah. He's being too much of a pedophile. 
Battle <laughs> 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 fuck. That's yeah, that's funny. Just, funny. That's bad, but funny. Uh, hey, look who decided to join us. We have Astronomy Live. Uh, people may not know, but Astronomy Live is the person who had a video the other day that was uh, collecting oh, comments from uh, deleted comments from various channels. He's actually monitoring my channel as well. Um, I have not deleted any comments, but recently there's but there's two comments already. But I found out that if people delete their own comments, it shows up. So. There's no really no way to know if you somebody deleted their own comment or if you deleted it. But I only delete trolls, and I'm happy that he's monitoring my channel. By all means, check out which ones I, I delete because they're usually almost always from people that have been banned from my channel. If you're banned from my channel, you don't get to leave a comment ever. You don't even get to be mentioned on my channel. I know. So. Steve, Steve bans me, but he still lets me on for some reason. Yeah, well, you keep making all these other sock accounts. Yeah, I know. And by the way, I, I you have to re- <laughs> this, is, this is your Zoom. Thank you for letting us use it, by the way. Um, <laughs> Go go subscribe to Biblical History Skeptics on YouTube, and also I changed my name just temporarily here so people didn't get us confused. People were calling me Chris for the longest time. But, uh, <laughs> but it's trying to be live. Do you want to fill us in on the details in that real quick, or do you mind? Well, or you... Sure. Um, can you guys hear me okay? You sound amazing, yep. dude. Okay. I'm just on my phone here. But um, and While you do so, that, I'm going to have pizza pizza. <laughs> so uh, basically, yeah, I wrote a program that uses the YouTube API to patrol channels of my choosing and uh, it monitors their comments and when it sees a comment has gone missing and by the way it monitors their comments based on the unique ID tag for those comments not the content of the comment so if someone edits their comment it doesn't think it's a new comment it it recognizes the original comment based on the um, ID tag that Google assigns to it so if it sees that an ID tag is now missing that must mean the comment was deleted or erased by somebody. It has no way of knowing who erased it, um, but usually the overall pattern of activity makes it pretty obvious when someone is definitely purging comments. Um, for, in- for instance, uh, the other night, uh, right after it was it was made public that Kyle had been served a paper requesting he retain all content related to his channel, there were suddenly... Uh, comment after comment getting erased and this purge lasted for several hours in fact all night basically uh, from roughly five o'clock on till midnight uh, with hundreds of comments being deleted Uh, it got to the point that the number of api calls that the bot was having to make maxed it out uh it it actually hit the api quote limit uh because of all the activity now you've so, never seen that before have you i've never actually hit the limit before yeah. no that's a, that's, a, and, that's a pretty high heavy, i gotta imagine if to hit that hard limit it's pretty impressive yeah yeah that it, that actually is legitimately impressive um so <laughs> that was uh that was new and basically so when, when the bot finds a comment that was deleted it goes to discord and uses the discord api to post it as a bot on Discord. So I have a Discord server. The sole purpose of that server is to serve as an archive of all deleted comments from each of the videos it's monitoring. Each each, uh, channel gets its own sub-channel or or whatever you call it. I'm I'm not like a a Discord person, but it gets its own channel uh, for each each channel (laughs) that's being monitored on YouTube. So basically, I've never seen this level of flurry of activity in that small time, especially for a non-commercial channel or a channel that's not being run by a major brand. Um, so, for example, Gillette or the NFL or something like that. Occasionally, like the you remember probably the Gillette commercial that got the sure. backlash. Yeah, um, ton of activity on that one. Now, when I monitored that one, that was the only video the bot was monitoring, which is how I stayed within the API limits. I, I set it on one video. That was the only video it was monitoring, just that one, um, and had it on a relatively um, slowed down pace. It would it would stop and catch its breath. Okay, now normally I, I don't have to do that, so I had it patrolling all these channels, and all of a sudden, Kyle starts deleting a shitload of comments, and it it actually killed the bot for a few hours because I had to wait till I got a new set of quote quota limits. Uh, the next day, and it's it's Pacific time because you know California, so um, I had to wait till 3 a.m. and then it started working. And now, 
over the weekend i've had it monitoring and i haven't seen a whole lot of activity i, I haven't checked today but i hadn't seen a whole lot of activity but yeah the, he basically purged comments where the videos previously you know had hundreds of comments on them down to maybe five or six comments left that now, weren't deleted now, now i have noticed though usually when you delete comments it doesn't change the amount of comments that is um uh, enumerated it says like you know like like if it says like 654 comments if you delete 600 of them it still says 654 comments it doesn't show them but i've noticed now it actually says like five or six comments yeah yeah what, how, how, when did that change i i don't know and and youtube is is usually pretty opaque about this stuff they don't tend to tell you when they change things under the hood and it it, just something got happened. changed under the hood i think because i remember specifically that it counted the number of comments and if you deleted comments it still counted as a comment if it was hidden or if it was deleted and now all of a sudden it looks like only six comments were left in those videos now granted you have a record of this now but we right. call it, you know, this is the great purge of 2019 i mean to me it's clear evidence of people trying somebody i'm not gonna say any names somebody trying to destroy the record somebody's trying to destroy evidence because i have a litigation happening there is shredding going on to say just as an analogy um, of evidence because these things are our records these things are permanent things that we're looking to to be used in civil litigation this mm -hmm. is why we issued the the demand letter now let me clarify for people again i will not talk about specifics of the case i could just tell you that things are going swimmingly um but uh i will talk about generalities a demand letter is not executable it is not something that's enforceable what that was you can execute it but you can't enforce it what that means is that when when before you you start a litigious process you do something in good faith to try to have remedy for example let's say mikey did something where he owes me something or there's some kind of you're just looking i'm just i didn't want to pick on <laughs> sweet okay all right fair enough uh so let's say i have to go and i have to get civil, civil remedy in order to make me whole again it's called and I will have good faith by saying, okay, Mikey, here's the, the, the demands. Let's see if we can resolve this before we go into litigation because it, it, it saves on court costs. It saves on the time of the, of the judge and the courts. Those are called good faith gestures. When those are violated, those are called bad faith, right? Uh, so uh, they're, they, look, they don't like when people violate cease and, uh, you know, not somebody, a letter of demand, even though there's no legal expectation that somebody has to abide by them. Those things, which is a, a, a which would be an actual cease and desist or things of that nature, an order to show cause, uh, a junction of preservation, those things we will have to go through the court system to do from the judge, which obviously we're going to have to do. Now it becomes expensive because now the lawyers have to do more work, and that's going to be coming out of somebody's pocket. Not going to be mine, not going to be Glenn's, but it's going to be coming out of someone's pocket. Because <laughs> <laughs> Glenn's going to get every dime back for what he, he pays for legal cost. So my understanding, and just speaking in general terms here, of course, but my understanding is that, for example, just just as a hypothetical, let's say, um, you you issue a demand to someone, uh, you know, I think something, uh, I think you did something to my car on your security camera, and I want you to preserve the evidence because we're going to go to court, we're going to debate, to battle this out, and then let's say for whatever reason you're able to prove that yes they deleted the footage of their security camera where they bashed your headlight in or whatever even though that's not easy today it's not like you said it's not uh, uh forcible as a, as a law um isn't there still serious ramifications for that behavior when you go to court oh yeah um, what do you think a judge is going to look at you see if you if a judge has two parties in front of them i use like nikki if, if if the judge says hey here's here's party steve and here's party nikki Steve has made every good faith effort from day one in trying to, to get remedy. Nikki says, screw you every every step of the way, which she probably would because that's her nature. Um, the judge could probably say, well, you know, you are not working with this person here and be less likely to do anything that this other person wants to have accomplished. Right. That's I've been through civil litigation before. I mean, I, it, this is this is not something that's atypical the 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 courts want to see people with a meeting of the minds that's why a lot of us go to 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 uh um what they call it um midi uh, what they, uh, mediation arbitration. arbitration or mediation right you're yeah. binding and non-binding arbitration and they they're trying to get a lot of it. matter of fact when i with my roommates when we had to go uh, for him being evicted, there was a non-binding arbitration taking place unfortunately the arbitrator told the roommate you're you are just nuts 
and it went to the it went to the judge because the arbitrator was like, "You are not working with anybody. You're you're not making any sense." Um, he was getting livid because the guy's insane. Yeah, so he went to the judge. The judge, even the judge in the courtroom, is still even saying the same thing. It's like, "You have no." He's like, "You have no case here. What you're saying makes no sense." So because he this guy was like. Uh, well, uh, I, yeah, they, they, they evicted me, but they didn't give me any notification of eviction. And he's like, sir, you were served on this date. Were you not? Yes. They, they came and they knocked on your door and told you they were going to remove you. Right. Yes. And you, and you knew about this weeks ahead of time. Yes. But, and now you're saying that you were not aware of this. Right. <laughs> Judges don't like that kind of stuff. They really don't. That obstruction when you start destroying stuff. No, because there's no, this is not a criminal matter. This is civil. But again, when you're storing pertinent information that can be used potentially for civil litigation, it's looked upon very, very unfavorably. So I'm quite happy. Um, matter of fact, uh, I mean, this is going exactly how I expected. So whatever. For, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but uh, it's going exactly how I expected. And, and I've received a number of comments from people on the video saying, Astronomy Live, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that's not enforceable. It's like, I was very careful in the video not to use the word illegal or yeah, not no, to say did, that. He, yeah, you did. You, and, you, and you did. And you, and you were very careful. And people, I saw the comments and he never, Astronomy Live never said somebody didn't do anything wrong. Uh, nobody did. Nobody did, any, nobody did anything illegal by deleting comments. You're more than what you more than within your law, legal right to do that. However, there's one, there's ethical considerations because you're destroying the record. Now, I just, I, I delete comments every so often. It's very, very rare. There's only been a handful of videos I've ever had to do it. But I, again, if you're a troll or if you're just coming over to start problems, you're gone. It's, there's, no, there's no discussion. You're just gone. Uh, that's how I run my channel. But there, when, it, when it's, you know, just people that are noting to somebody that they've done something that has been to their eyes, uh, unethical and then you delete that 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 to me is pretty shady but it is a flagrant disregard for the demand letter and again look courts look unfavorably upon that would you agree right. on that and, and so you know and, and like you said I, I i didn't accuse him of committing a crime it was just pointing out that this is definitely going against the demand letter and definitely going against what he said he was going to do publicly that he wouldn't erase anything which is um, another thing that I, I think is kind of funny um Nothing's going to be deleted, and yet 600, 700 comments have already been deleted. So, I mean, that's that's there's something incongruent there, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And at so I'll, then, the, at least I say I'll delete comments if I need to. I don't make the I'll never say I'm not going to delete comments. <laughs> right, right. And and so then the argument is made. Well, how do you really know he did it? Okay, so two possibilities there. If he didn't do it, there there are two, maybe three possibilities. The one extreme unlikely possibility is YouTube did it. YouTube's own admins just for whatever reason erased all these comments because it happens so frequently right <laughs> yeah exactly like there's some grand conspiracy to make him look bad by youtube um yeah i'm gonna go with uh show me the evidence on that um a possibility too uh all these people conspired together themselves to erase their own comments to make them look bad again that's pretty outrageous you know extraordinary claims require incredible proof all that stuff or incredible claim, claims require extraordinary evidence all that stuff um, I don't see any evidence of some grand conspiracy to have these people collaborate and all erase their comments on the same night to make them look bad. Um, option number three, his mods did it. Okay. If that happens, and I've, I've had this happen before, you know, I've got mods too who've erased comments on my channel before. They go into a queue. I can review those comments. I can choose to even restore those comments. They're not permanently gone. And so if that's the case... Personally, I, as I said in the video, I welcome him to prove me wrong. Go ahead, restore the comments. Show us that, you know, this was just some rogue mod on your channel that did it. Uh, that's easily fixable, if that's the case. But I don't see these comments coming back. Yeah, so they're permanently gone. I'm probably, I'm pretty confident that they're permanently gone. Well, <laughs> except for the record that you have, right? Which didn't capture right. every, all of them. It captured sure most, but I don't know how many probably missed during the time you which your hard cap. But could have been. I can't imagine that many. But it got the vast majority. It got the ones that I think were the most pertinent. Uh, people mm -hmm. that have been, you know, saying, "Hey, th you know, there's, there's stuff going on with this channel." Now I noticed those are all gone, so it looks like it's all been whitewashed. 
Uh, but I'm not going to let people forget. And I know that people to this channel that watch this channel, I know the fans uh -huh. of the the non sequitur show and the patreons that were on the non sequitur they're not gonna let it go this is not gonna this is not gonna, this is gonna go away um until it's it, it, in fact even after i think it's resolved i don't think this is something that's ever gonna go away i think this is something that's gonna seriously be in perpetuity on the internet <laughs> so just, 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 just kind of throw it out there well, where I is the merch <laughs> the memes will never die yeah you got my face on a mug um by the way, people have asked me for merch for this channel. I don't know what the hell to do with that. I, I will consider it. I'm, I'm pondering it. Put your it. face on a mug so that way you have your face. Well, if I do that, Cheshire has to redesign it. She wants to redesign it. Me and Cheshire are in talks already. Yeah. Yes. Really I need I need a mug that says in perpetuity or shirt if, if or If I sticker. get some designs. Well, see, what, Give I, me a sticker. what I like, it to, uh, we never got our shelf on the non sequitur show. The, the, YouTube is really weird how who gives a shelf to it and who it doesn't. But if I get a shelf, I might consider to have a limited thing because I, I'm not really. I like the the clothing's good stuff. I actually, from everybody who's bought stuff, said that the, the Teespring does really good work. Um, so I'm not concerned about the quality or anything. It's just I don't know. I, I'm not much of a merch person, but we'll figure it out. What I, I would do is like the non. It'll be like not non sequitur show stuff. But it'll be the great debate community stuff. However, if I ever get back to the channel, we'll see. You know. I have a uh, pine trees don't produce elephants t-shirt. It's actually pretty good quality. <laughs> I really like it. I just hate that it says non sequitur show now because uh, every time I wear it, I feel like uh, I'm betraying. It's, 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 no, you're not. Anyways, memorabilia. Look at no, that. Uh, it, that's it's, it's good quality and people need to remember that show for what it was, not at what it is now because it's not the same show. Matter of fact, it's not even the show. The non sequitur show is gone. I think in my opinion, it's just the channel. There's a non sequitur show channel. And basically it's just co-tailing on the, on other people by having other people stream and just kind of restreaming it. Um, now people are allowed to do that. I mean, I have no issue with that. However, it's kind of funny when, you know, you have somebody who has a larger channel that another person is, you know, writing those coattails, getting those, trying to get those subs, uh, because they don't know what's going on, and I think it's the the patrons and the fans of the show are going to let those fans know <laughs> what's going on over time because they slowly do. And I have people telling me right now that they've actually unsubscribed to channels because of stuff like this. Um, hey, Steve, you know, the, yeah. Could you put in what the uh, um, I got uh, ID is in the chat, Lauren? I, I already got Lauren. I mean, I've told I got, I've given to Lawrence twice. Oh. The room, the room ID number. The room ID number is just the last part of the of the of the, of the thing. Oh, okay. The, link, it's, it's the the room ID number is the last part of the link, Lawrence. So you just you just cut off the link and that gives you the room ID number. I gotta be honest, that took me a while to figure out. Um, I would post the invite in the chat, but no, I don't, don't do have that. a I I don't have a wrench. Don't anyway. do that. No, don't don't post the room. Don't do that. You literally said that at the beginning of the hangout. That's why you're the gatekeeper. So people, you, you don't want to give this information out. It was now. It was I got to go. figure a way to make it so I can have like a mailing list or something like that, so I can get the links out to people of people that I trust. Um, I've tried that before with G Plus. It didn't work really well. Um, so mm. we'll, we'll figure out something. Because it goes. Super chat. Uh, Harvey Bird, two dollars. Smug, smug, smug. Yes. Smugs. What if you made smogs? Smogs? Smogs. Smigs? Yes. Yeah, like smog. the dragon. Yeah. I think that's copyright. Smog is, is yeah. <laughs> Just they're... spell it wrong. It, how long is that going to be in copyright for? My goodness. I yeah, no that idea. book's like 700 years old. Give it up, guys. Happy birthday still Rude. copyrighted. Uh, as Sandra says, what's on no, topic? No, I heard it got dropped from copyright. I thought so, too. I thought so, too. I, I have heard that it's no longer copyrighted but is in public domain but i don't know that for sure so if somebody finds that out let me know but, all right uh, i'm googling it right now so if because it's not if it's not copyrighted you're gonna sing it i'm, I'm gonna say exactly okay. i'm gonna sing it like they ever, ever ever like anybody's ever been sued for that right but as sandra well, says what's the topic there is no topic tonight chester i was supposed to run this uh she had a power outage but i know like for example i know sandra's not gonna let this go he was one of the biggest donators he wants to know what happened to the money i don't blame him i would too it's been 40 days now, 40 days since I was promised that I would, I would, you know, get paid and, and it would be, rem I would have my remedy 40 days. All right. So last time seen is that this whole, 
just the whole situation. I'm sorry. I just like I just got refreshedly angry. This is just this <laughs> is fucking trigger. bullshit. People, people should get angry, and every and once a yeah. week they probably like, will get angry because I will fuck remind Kyle. people once a week in perpetuity. Uh, it, it even after this is rectified, I probably would remind people. I, this is something that I don't think the internet should ever forget. That what happened. It cannot be whitewashed. It cannot be just deleted. The comments cannot be deleted. Uh, this was a. A, a huge thing of, of something that happened, and I don't want people to forget. I honestly don't. Uh, I don't want this to happen in another channel. This is one of the reasons I am actually went to civil litigation, that I actually got a competent attorney, because I even told him, I don't want to see this happen to other people on, on channels. I, I want people to know that this is something you cannot do. Oh, Steve, I, I know at least one person who is now a fan of yours, specifically because this happened. And I mentioned it, and he got so upset about the whole situation that he subscribed to your channel despite <clears throat> never having subscribed to the non sequitur show. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, that's cool. I mean, yeah. I, I had a lot of people. Well, I I had a lot of, you know a number of subs before non sequitur, uh, and and some people that don't that know me through like Facebook. Fourth dimensional Jake, two dollars, uh, forty days and forty nights. Steve sailed the flood blue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, actually, that that friend is uh, the bent who's sometimes on my channel for my live streams where we hate watch Kent Hovind. Who who's, mm. who's, who does who is? Uh, his name is uh, Bent. Well, he goes by Bent on the internet. That's not actually his name, but now his he's name is bent. yeah. But uh, yeah, he and I do uh, live streams every once in a while to hate watch Kent Hovind, where nice. we just pause it and go through all the reasons he's just awfully wrong. I used to do that. I mean, I used to, to hate on a Kent, but now I just, I, to me, he's, a, he's nothing any longer. He's been so oh, yeah. marginalized and yeah, you know, he's something for me to rant about. On oh, the sure. I, I, I say go for it. I picked on him enough. Uh, and yeah. maybe one day I'll go back to it, but, uh, he's just so boring and just non interesting. The reason yeah. he was, the reason he was interesting for a while after he got out of prison is because he hadn't really done much after he got out of prison and stupid me. Put him back on the map a little bit by bringing him <laughs> on my channel and having him, have him discuss things with King Crocoduck and uh, Bill Ludlow. Well, and and he, I think that emboldened him a little bit. Now he's having debates and again, but he's having a modern day debate, which is a great <laughs> channel. I love James to death. And Oh, but, yeah, James is great. <laughs> but the only thing about modern day debate is James is not going to put the kibosh on Kent like I do, right? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I as a moder facilitator or moderator, I don't let Kent get away with crap. You know, and so he's not going to come back on here. I, oh, I was told there would be equal uh, time. Yeah, that, actually, not that the reminds... last time, not the debate he had with Aaron. He was never told that. No, but he made that so, very clear that he was not in the equal time. in the comments of Kent's uh, copy of our debate. There were people complaining that I spoke more than he did, and it's like it was on his channel. I'm sorry that he can't control his own channel and tell me to shut up. Yeah, but like, come on. It's like can't can't even get himself equal time when he wants it. Yeah, and somebody asked, uh, "Is the C and D legally binding?" Yes, the cease and desist is legally binding, but that we haven't gotten that yet. We're working on that now. We've issued a demand letter for a cease and desist, but that's not the same thing. One's a request, the other is a judicial order. You see the difference? There's, there's a huge difference between. A demand letter saying these are the things we want. You don't give it to us. We go to a judge and we get it done legally. So, oh, you look confused, Chris. Chris, is he like? He looks fabulous. Is what he looks. I know he's got that. He got that wind blowing in his hair and shit. <laughs> his hair. It's very R and raw ass. Yeah, you got. Did you condition that today? Huh. That looks like it's been hot oil treatment treated or something. You're muted. Oh, so. eggs. Use egg yolks. I, I just, that makes your hair so soft. I, I actually just got out of the shower, so. Oh. Something light, you know. It, it, did did you shower by it. yourself or did you conserve water and shower with a friend? Because I think that's like what we do in California. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's just, you know, we're conservationists here, so. Yeah, I, I don't do that. You know what I, you're missing. I do it by myself. I've got things to think about in the shower. I bet you do. <laughs> Trying to get divine. Yeah. That's you know I, I I will I will admit that the shower is a good time to just think you know get that yeah there's a reason the hashtag shower thoughts exist yeah I love the, I mean I, I gotta admit that the sensation of that water and especially in California was really freaking hot <laughs> I mean it's like I I used to before I moved I was sometimes like getting in the shower five or six times a day because it was so freaking hot uh, and it's just the only way to cool down yeah that was today here. 
There's three showers for today. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, what's your temperature there? Three showers. Well, the she's very clean. I honestly don't even know what it got up to, but it felt like you know 110 for the today and yesterday. It was muggy. Ugh. I have a, I have a question because I, I live in the Midwest and we also have hot <laughs> mid weather. We don't ever shower like 48 times a day. We just keep our homes cool. Do y'all not have AC there? <laughs> no, I don't have um, I don't have central I'm AC. I got AC in my room. But... Too. I went out a lot, so I was going back and forth outside and doing stuff outside. So that's uh, really why if I was in all day, it would have been different. Yeah. I just said we no, have central we AC. That. We just don't run no, it. We, yeah, we got. We, we don't. Have... We don't. We don't do that whole in and out of the house when it's hot. No, we just stay in the house. <laughs> By the way, quick shout out. Check out. Um, progressive liberals channel if we get a chance um he asked me to do a critique on one of his videos and he wanted to be as, as he wanted to be as blunt as possible so i was uh, mistakes Ouch. were made i think uh, on his video but uh I, I still like his stuff um so go check out yeah he's check wonderful out. check him out yeah, he's a great guy he's a great guy um uh, i just it was on objective morality and you know you know my beefs with that and i i, I see a lot oh, of people yeah. just <laughs> no no offense smart. no i don't want to throw progressive liberal under the bus because i really like the guy but it's just he starts off using he's like this is what objective means he's using a dictionary and i'm like that's not gonna get you to where you want to go in, in, in what objective means in moral context um uh, this is where it confused this is like the bionic dance thing she doesn't understand objective morality because she's using this this dictionary from you know of, of, of terminology and that's not what it means that's not how the what objective okay, morality. Get him in here. let's talk about it oh he can come in anytime he wants <laughs> aggressive lip or you want you want the link uh and so when I hear people say, well, object, like bionic dance would be like objective morality is impossible. Why? And she'll come up with these weird things. It's like none of that even makes sense. That Twitter exchange was ridiculous. She I had no that. idea. She doesn't understand these words. She thinks ridiculous. she does because she's using a grade school dictionary. So she thinks she, she's she's operating <laughs> at this level. But the people having the actual discussion is up here. And then she'll be calling me a dick for not, you know, I've tried to explain to her. She doesn't want to learn it over the years. And so I'm the asshole. I'm the pretentious one. I'm the one that's actually taking the time to read and maybe learn something that she's never done in five or six years. She's never opened a book on this stuff. She's never read a paper on this stuff. And the audacity she has to try to tell other people about morality and the other t and people of philosophy on a subject she's never read upon to me is mind boggling. Steve, because you're right, doesn't make you not a dick. That's absolutely the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dagger just no, came in with a dagger. Yeah, mm. yeah but, mm. but he's not trying to not be a dick. He's trying to prove his point. So who cares? Yeah, no. Um, Bionic Dance has been doing this for like a decade, and everybody that knows anything about philosophy has written her off ages ago. Um, if you guys want to watch the greatest video of all time, go watch on the place uh, Atheist Roundtable or something it was called. And she actually tells a linguist that he doesn't know what words mean. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's Ozzy was in it. Um, um, Are these like linguistic technical terms? No, he, the word like the word was equivocate, and she was like, you, you, "Well, you don't know what equivocate means, then." And it's like he's a linguist; he he understands yeah. equivocation. <laughs> Uh, the arrogance. I mean, it, it was back in the day where she started the arguments that atheists were rocks, and everybody was trying to tell her no. Bionic dance that's stupid she well, still this day rocks or atheists. oh yeah all, all atheists are rocks well that would no, be a, that, that'd be a theist that's, argument that's, that's yeah. the opposite way around yeah. i'm pretty sure she said all rocks are atheists yeah all rocks are atheists. what i say yeah you said atheists are rocks oh uh, well which... again from a theist position <laughs> i mean the, well you know. if if you believe kent hovind and you're a big right. fan of phylogenetics then yeah i mean we all came from rocks so we still we are all for rocks even though rocks don't right. have genes uh two bn three two three five dollars caveman <clears throat> Are just old men with rick rickets, old folks hack. Yeah, that's that's a that's a what was it? That wasn't Hoven that started that though. I think that was who started. That I think that's rickets? I think that started like all the way back with like Morris or something. It could have been more Henry Morris. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a bunch of Morris books on my shelf. Were you were you a young Earth creationist? I was. I was a young Earth creationist right. for quite that. a while. Yeah, I think a lot of the anti-Young Earth creationist crowd are that way because they were Young Earth creationists and feel, like, personally offended that they were so badly lied to. Oh, I know. Yeah, well, like, Wayne Fillmore was oh, yeah. ex-Young Earth creationist, and he was he wanted to sue them. I don't know how you'd do that. I don't but. know, but he was he – was, he, when he realized that moment – because he had a debate with me and I explained to him my Mac revolution and he recognized that it was an actual legit thing. And that caused a schism in his brain because he's like, wait a minute, 
I think Steve's right on here. What I'm reading seems legit. This makes sense to me because he's not an idiot. And then his whole world fell apart because it's step by step. Everything he found out about Young Inspiration was BS. He knows this crap now, many, many, many years later. He's, and he's, he's very much into science and he wants to be a science teacher. Uh, but I think that happens because he really was mad at them. And rightfully yeah. so. Yeah, well, it's it's one of these things where, like, for a while I was thinking to myself, all right, are they actually deluded or are they lying? And now I've seen too many of them be shown the actual evidence that they're wrong for too many claims that they then just keep going with to think that they're It's honest. both. No, I think it's both. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. <clears throat> no, I think they're slightly delusional. I think they're, just, uh, they're either outright liars or at least at the very least intellectual liars. Um, and intellectually dishonest, but you know, I think a lot of them probably know the higher ups. I think know it's bullshit. Yeah, but you get money for it. <clears throat> I mean, look at Ken Ham. He could never make that much money being honest. No, no, and neither can Eric Hoven. No, no, no. There's money to be had there. If there was not money to be had there. You would not see Young Earth creationism. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of that. You also want to see obviously things like gospel prosperity. You know. Joel Osteen I, kind of things. You I want to see Benny Hens. You want to see Peter Popoffs. Yeah, I agree with those. I think there would still be Young Earth creationism. I just think it would be uh, sort of a, a thing only uneducated people talk about. And, you know, you'll get it in like the kinds of churches where they say, oh, you shouldn't get a degree to be a pastor. You should just be some Joe who works at the gas station. Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't think it would be a thing. And, and maybe, it may, and maybe you might be right. But the reason I would argue that I don't think it would be a thing is because the reason why there's a younger creationist is because they're getting the information from people that have titles that are telling them certain things. And there's, there's an error, error, uh, error of authority behind it, right? There's something yeah, that, that oh, this PhD is saying this, therefore... It must be the case when Tompkins does something on human chromosome or two, people go, oh, look, he's a geneticist, even though he's more into botany. And he does, I guess, good work on that. But when you when you talk to somebody who knows genetics and you go over Tompkins work, they point out yeah. he's full of crap. Like, didn't he run a genetic comparison with humans and pantroglodytes mm -hmm. and like use a program with an actual error in it and then just stood by it? Yeah, well, he didn't stand by it. What happened was, OK, so. He wanted to do a genomic analysis between pantroglodytes, which are chimps and humans, and he ran a program called BLAST. Well, BLAST, the program that the version he had, had a batch program issue where if you put too many sequences at once, it had an error. I think it was over like 75,000 or, or something like that at once. And so this was noted him by my person who is my power of attorney now, Glenn Williamson, okay, okay. Who, who's an amateur geneticist as well. He won't ever say that, but he, he, he knows genetics pretty well. Uh, progressive liberal. I don't know why that link's not working. I gave it to, that's that should be the link for um, the hangout uh, in your timeline or in your uh, in DMs from Twitter. So, so he contacted uh, Dr. Tompkins and people noted him that there was a program in it. He had to admit there was a bug in it. So, what he did was something I think was was reminiscent of somebody who's completely and utterly dishonest because he was getting about a 70% genomic match. Well, which is absurdly low. Which is absurdly low, right? Because we're looking at about a 99%, 98.9%, depending on how you do some of the genomic matches. Right. That, you count. That's the kind of thing I might say was reasonable if you were like comparing a lobster and a human or something. Yeah, I mean, if you got something like 98.7 or 98. Nobody would have batted an eye, but 70, right? Ridiculous. That's ridiculous, yeah. That's, no. that's like on the edge. That's kind of like us in a marsupial or something. No, so, it's, it's worse than that. Is it, Yeah, it probably is. I mean, I mean it really is. I mean, us in a, like, a banana is 50%. You're like, yeah, yeah uh, most plants are at about half genetic identicalness with most animals. We're talking like 70%, like, yeah, maybe a lobster. That might work. Yeah, but so some kind of crustacean, maybe. Yeah. Uh, fourth Dimensional Jake, again, $5. There's a legal case <clears throat> to sue if you were homeschooled, but at the least in some states to withhold schooling from a child is illegal. This is true. Uh, so so the, the Dr. Tompkins, what he did was he then re ran Blast, and he used what's called an ungapped parameter. And the ungapped parameter, what it does is normally you have, in a sequence, you have, you have what's called endels. And an endel right. is a one-time insertion or deletion of nucleotide differences. So these are mutations that have happened at one time. Oh, entire, right, and it causes the frame shift, right? And then it, he would no, count it can cause a frame shift, sure. And he would count every single difference after the frame shift as, as a difference. As, as each one, right. So let's say right. I've got, let's say I've got a, a, a small, nucle a small um, and again, this is not my area, but... Uh, if you got a, this is what I've learned from people that do know what they're talking about. Uh, if you have a small indel, let's say we've got I don't know, like ten differences. 
normally that'd be counted as one mutation because it's one time insertion or deletion event. But right. he, he counted them as individuals, which is going to obviously make a higher difference. So he came up with a number between about 80 and 85 the second time to try to get it closer yeah. to 70, which was completely dishonest because people are saying nobody does it that way. That's that's not how you do genomic analysis. Yeah, the, that, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. It, it would be like if, if I went into like, you know, a word file and deleted a space and then saved it and you're like, oh, everything after that is just completely different. It's like, no, it's not. It's obviously the same. But yeah. there's one thing missing. That would that he would count that as a, as a, as a discrepancy yeah. between the two. That's genomes. it's hard to imagine that anyone would see that as an honest move. Yeah, and it wasn't. I, I I don't think it was at all. I think that he was being duplicitous, and I think that's when you when you work for ICR or CRI and you are a PhD and you have to sign a waiver, a statement of faith saying that there is no scientific evidence that can compromise your position such that if there's evidence that goes against the younger creationist uh, narrative, the evidence must be wrong. <clears throat> That at that point you are no longer a scientist. You've waved away your right to be called a scientist, in my opinion. Yeah, and it's not like that's the only instance of creationists trying to do research and being very dishonest. Like uh, Andrew Snelling lied to get uh, permits to study the, rocks in the Grand Canyon. Yep. Lied about what? I think it was his collection methods. He mm -hmm. lied about. Yeah, they they asked for a collection of methods. He lied. They gave him the first permit. They recognized that he lied on it, and then and then they decided not to give him another one. And he made a big stink about that, calling it religious. Um, uh, what they what, what, what I'm trying to think of the word he used. Discrimination. Discrimination. Or something? Yeah, I think it was called. I think he called it religious discrimination. So yeah. Yeah, I, I'm That's sure bull, that bull crap. If I've ever seen it. Uh, yeah, somehow I feel like it was probably to do with not wanting people doing destructive. Uh, sample collection rather than not wanting Christians to do sample collection. Right. Cause I'm going to go out on a limb and say that my guess is that a lot of Christians have been approved multiple times for sample collection in the grand Canyon. But you want to do as much non-destructive testing as possible. Right. Yeah. You want to be careful because you know, the grand Canyon is already collapsing by definition. So, you know, let's not make and that happen. He's more. not the only one that's like that. Steve Austin, uh, I mean, with this whole pyroclastic flow from Matt San Helen's crap, I mean, he, he, he has to know that's complete bullshit. Trying to compare, you know, flow from ash flows, from like two, two separate times ash has flowed, to millions of years old, you know, layers in the Grand Canyon that are actual, you can see the unconformities. You can actually see there's erosion layers between different stages of, of layers yeah. that have been laid down. You can actually see it. I mean, it is, if you actually, look, there's, there's the great unconformity there, and there's also paraconformities and disconformities and all these other geological features where you go... There, there was clearly sedimentation and then erosion over a period of time. This was not laid down in, in one nope. time like a pyroclastic flow would be or ash. He has to I mean, he's a he's a he's a Ph.D. in geology. Yeah. And, and he, you hear these things like, oh, you know, multiple layers can be laid down by a single flood. Yeah. Multiple layers of graded bedding can be laid down by a single flood. But when you have some graded bedding followed by some alien sandstone, followed by some slate, followed by some, you know, marine limestone or something, followed by you know, a, an evaporite deposit. It's like, no, none of that makes sense. You can't have that laid down in the flood. Floods can't even lay down windborne sediments or evaporite deposits. I, I don't I, even know how, 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 how they think that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think I, when you have it, when you have like kind of the stuff, you have turbulent flow and I don't know how you, they think that real layers are going to lay down this nice silt layer of something or no, alluvial right. diamonds or something. Well, and know, then I there's this thing like, Oh, all the fossils were laid down by the flood. And, yeah, I, no, it doesn't do hydrological okay. sorting like that. My my one thing is, all right, look at the holotype for Archaeopteryx lithographica, right? Where you get these nice feather impressions with the rachis and you can see the barbs. I don't think you can see the barbules, but I don't remember. But anyway, that requires slow, steady deposition of extremely fine grain sediments. And the reason that Archaeopteryx survived that long was because it was at the bottom of an anoxic lagoon, so nothing was eating it. These are exactly the opposite of the kinds of conditions that you would expect from a turbulent year-long worldwide flood. There, like, you're you're oh. saying there's, so there wasn't a lot of bacteria or anything that was... Yeah, the yeah. only bacteria that would have been there would have been um, anaerobic, anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic can survive and, in conditions, yeah. And anaerobic bacteria, because they don't use oxygen, <laughs> right. fairly low metabolic rate. So even when they're decomposing things, they do it slowly. Yeah. <clears throat>
Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, th- one of these days we'll have to discuss Linsky's 20 year long E. coli experiment that uh, oh, I find yeah. fascinating for that very reason. That's, that's and, the one where one of the lines started to digest citrate, isn't it? Yeah, it was citrate plus because it was normally able to produce, it was able to, to, to digest it uh, anaerobically. Uh, right. And so when the, when the president of oxygen, they it couldn't do it. But uh, over time, it learned. Well, it didn't learn, but there's a mutation that happened more than one, actually, that caused it to lose the ability to to to, to process something else. I think it was maltrose or something. But it, but it allowed the, that uh, organism, that that E. coli to process citrate plus in an anaerobic uh, uh, in an aerobic environment. Normally right. that it can't do that. So. That's what the, the metabolic pathway wasn't there. It it actually made a new metabolic pathway from old metabolic pathways, which is what evolution would right would, would, my, would stay. That's that's what we, it has to happen. This was a big event, and then you have these these, yeah. these younger creations. Oh, it was it was no big deal. It was just a mutation. It, it's exactly what we would have predicted for new metabolic pathways. Right, and the thing is, it's not just one it's mutation. They actually, they actually, in order to find out exactly what had happened, because every day, right, they would take. A sample population and then preserve it yeah. as a record. And so what they did was they went back through previous days and revived portions of the samples that they had taken to see at what point there had been uh, the what line the had mutation happened exposed to this. And they actually found that there was a mutation that primed the later generations to be able to then have a subsequent mutation that would allow them to digest citrate. And, and so that was class number nine, I believe. That I yeah. I would have to double check on that. I mean, I read I read the paper, and, and yeah, you're, 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 the, 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 there's precursors to the event to the the actual mutation yeah. allowed it. So you yeah. we can actually trace the entire system Isn't of that cool? which mutations happened. There's not a question about this. It's not a hypothesis. It's like nope, this is exactly what happens. We have the genome subsequently through time. But see how the see how the uh, anti evolutionist creationists try to downplay that stuff. Well, there's still bacteria. There's still bacteria, yeah. Right. <laughs> Their bacteria just, was just a scratch, brand Nikki. metabolic pathway. Are you, still, are you still a non-bacteria, Nikki? Have you have you evolved into a bacteria yet? Uh, I, I I wish. I would like to be anything but a human. So oh. That'd be, that'd be fun. Don't be bumming us out. Humans are good. Well, most humans. Well, no, they're not. Okay. <laughs> they're there's they're some good humans. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, I, can't say no. the, I can't see the most. Had me. But I got to tell you, the scotch gets better after a few shots. What are you drinking, Padme, now? Yeah. I thought you weren't the drinking. Same. He's drinking the same. Are you yeah. drinking out of a bottle? I mean. What is that, 250 milliliter of Johnny Walker? You're drinking like, scotch out of a bottle? It's a small bottle. Like Real man right there. there. Yeah, you're my new favorite like, person. I, I don't know if that's real man <laughs> or that's sacrilege. You got to give me a bottle real it's quick. It's not going Johnny Walker Black. It's okay. Look at him go so that. It's, it's a sipping drink. Okay. Yeah, uh, well. All right, whatever. You, you what brand of scotch is that that comes in such a tiny bottle? It's it, 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 it literally insane. Milliliters? Look who's here. Because yeah. Steve sent him bad links. Uh, this is, seven, <gasps> this is a, not my seven, fault. Yeah, this is seven. Oh, clink it. Clink it. Clink it. This is 750 uh, milliliters. Oh, Chomsky so, stuff. But you don't, I mean. I'm, I'm good. I, I got a little water left. I can't mix scotch. All right, water. all right. I okay. like scotch and water, but not not this brand. I uh, don't have any scotch, so I, that's what I, I'm stuck scotch, with. Uh, grape Gatorade right now. That's not. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm hard like, stuff. Okay, I, I I hate this. It it tastes horrible, but it's growing on me. It is not. I, I mean, it's scotch. <laughs> I, I'm I telling really you, like it does it. not taste horribly. I, I, by the time you not. finish that much, this stuff would be like the nectar of the gods to you. Yeah, it's like it, it grows tastes, on you really it, fast. It's really good. It, yeah, it, it's like super strong and it has like this ah, alcohol, but like I keep wanting to drink it. It's yeah, not it's like <laughs> I don't like freak out every time I take it. It's a sipping drink. The thing I with scotch it. is you have yeah. to adjust your palate to it. You have to get used to it, but, but you sip right. it. You don't, don't, yes. don't shoot it or anything like that. Yeah, I think well, you, you use it to empty your palate. You smell the, it and smell it. The more you drink yeah. scotch, the better it gets. When, when you smell it, you can smell the oak and you can smell the, the, the rustic qualities of it. It smells mm-hmm. really amazing. And this is why when yeah. you have like, I had a wine at a wrestling one time when I was uh, hanging out with uh, Brittany Simon. We went to a winery and uh, they recommended a wine to, to me, a wrestling that had been aged in, in brandy uh, bottle, uh, co- oak brandy ca- uh, cast. Casks. And yeah. man, I got to tell you, that infusion, you would think wine Ooh. and brandy, right? Not a good mixture, although I like brandy and coffee. Freaking amazing. It was one of the best wines I've ever had. I mean, it's just it's just like a hint of it. You can just it's like that musky uh, oak flavor. 
It's right. so delicious. I, I mean, and that's why I'm smelling this. It's a little it's like the, that oak. I mean, I would try it. It was really good. I like honestly. brandy. I, well, I, brandy straight. You know, I don't like brandy straight. Uh, but no, I like, no, no. You put a couple of rocks in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, on the rocks is fine. Yeah, but even so, I, I mix it in coffee. You take coffee, you put okay. a little bit of uh, sweet and low, and I like sweet and low uh, in it, or uh, aspartaming, or um, oh, okay, Splenda, Michael Scott. Choices. I don't like. You I want don't, a pack I'm of big Splenda? Person. I don't. I'm not oh. a big Splenda fan. But no. sweet and low. Gosh, the Splenda tastes yeah. like. Splenda and then you put brandy in it, scotch. and then you you put some kind of half and half in it. I could put like a hazelnut <laughs> creamer in it, or just any kind of cream, a little bit of creamer in it. It's like the, the most delicious coffee you're ever going to have. It's brilliant. What has science done? Uh, it's a couple of super <laughs> chats. I'm, I'm, defi- right? I, I'm, I'm behind on super chats. Holy crap. Um, one sec. Uh, You're three behind. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, no. Learning from Such. Okay. So learning from Such, $10. Dig in the new headset, Steve. Now here's a small contribution toward the eyeglass lens fund. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get that done. Um, I got a lot of stuff planned this week. Um, I did finally get my ID, so th- thank you for uh, somebody named Sweet Heathen that forced me to, um, that said either get it this week or I'm just going to like block you on all platforms. I said, eh, well, whatever. That that conversation did, did not, not happen. Ha- it, it, well, in, in some possible <laughs> world, it did. Okay, so there's no possible world where that happened. <laughs> She's um. like, get your, but you, no, it did. No, it, it's, it's, it's always a kernel of truth. You did tell me to go get that mofo, didn't you? Not in some some way. Well, you said you wanted to get your ID for reasons, and I said, "Yeah, that's a good reason." And, and I, I said, "Encourage me." I said, "It forced me to." And you said something like, "I, well, I don't know." I, won't be- I probably did being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so th- <laughs> next week, I got to go down to Loma Linda. I got to get my new VA card. Um, I'm getting a birth certificate, so I can possibly get a passport. And I'm I'm just getting all my documents all over again. Mm. You should take you should take uh, sweets with you, and she should pick out your glasses. She's like three thousand miles away, and I'm not getting no, glasses. No, like I'm take contacts. her with you, like it, with your phone or whatever. Yeah, you could Facetime her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. You can try them on and send them. I don't want to get new glasses. Yes. I want to get contacts. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. So, Steve, they have this thing called the internet, and what it allows <laughs> you to do. Is that I new? My glasses are so online. Is talking that, with I just people the... over great distances. Hey, so uh, I don't want us to forget. There's a five dollar and a five thousand won super chat. Yeah, that, I'm I'm ready for them. Way. Okay. Okay. So learning with shoe five dollars. Uh, sorry to hear about Lyle's actions. May <laughs> what do you expect from moon landing deniers? Yeah, he actually believes we went to the moon. Uh, Kawasa five thousand uh, won. won. Surely, yeah. Steve, get new glasses. Seems like a worthy cause. Count me in. Yeah, I, I will be getting new glasses. Uh, but I just want. How many glasses. people have donated to that fund now? Both. We need to we need to see the money, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see yeah, the money. Show yeah, me the money fun. shot. Um, Steve, <laughs> uh, Steve um, I think you should have to report to Medicare about your. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they don't have optical, by the way. <laughs> I don't have optical. I'm emailing right now, Steve. VA doesn't even have optical. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I have a Katie, question. Katie is recording this to oh, make oh. a video tomorrow. I'm just telling. You. Oh yeah, well, according to her, all this has been settled. Uh, it's it's funny. I... Well, well, quick, somebody had asked me, you don't have a passport. I, yeah, I don't have a passport. And some idiot on Twitter, go figure, there's idiots on Twitter. Somebody was like, well, that means you lied about the Navy. How'd you go to all these other countries even you have a passport? I'm like, you're a special kind of stupid. Wow. Actually. You really are a special kind of stupid. Wow. Okay. You should have um, told I like it when Steve gets there. salty on the internet. Ooh. That's me being salty. I mean, that's that's just levels of ethically stupid that I just can't even, <laughs> right. so even remotely wrap Salty Steve is good. Tired Steve is better. I hate tired um, Steve. Drunk I was, Steve is best. I I I I didn't want to do this <laughs> tonight. Yeah, this is why I had drunk. Cheshire had, was going to do this for me tonight. Uh, it wasn't that I was tired. I was mentally drained. Um, I just wanted to, to. I honestly, I'm not going to front. I just wanted to sit and play fucking mindless video games and just not think of anything. Um, I, I'm on a, 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 a Act Two of Divinity Two, and I'm kind of getting into that game, and I just wanted to play and forget about everything. Um, mm-hmm. That's it. Good game. How it's a great game. Money, it's a really good game. How much money does Nikki have to pay you to get your old glasses when you get new ones? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just send it to me in like a glass case. That's just weird. <laughs> and I'll just sleep with it. And, you know. <laughs> Put it, you know shadow it. box it. How, yeah, shadow, shadow box, box your glasses, yes. I'll, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell, you, what, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If I go to Colorado, I will, mm-hmm. I will do this. 
I will donate my glasses and my old pair of headphones to you. <gasps> She's gonna be <laughs> smelling <laughs> glasses all night, baby. She's gonna be sniffing them. Ooh. I'm gonna have to try and find uh, cases for those. Hmm. Okay. You one okay. weird, <laughs> weird person. <laughs> Steve, I am your stalker. This is my job. You have it's one my job. job, Steve. Uh, and yeah, so so. Anyways, when it comes to the whole like prescription medical stuff, um, yeah, I, I the, the lenses are not cheap. That's for sure. But it's not gonna make, make or break me. I, I get I gotta get two lenses. So I will be getting that before I go on vacation. I'm going on vacation next month. I'll be gone for like two weeks. I'm going to be going various places. So. And I'm also going to my own whole town, Indio, here in a couple weeks to meet a friend, too. Uh, Erratas, your muse, $5. We French Canadians make a good moonshine. We call it De, de Umbru. De Umbru. Uh, sounds good. Probably 190 proof. <laughs> Yikes. You go blind, Steve. Yeah, if it's got ethyl alcohol in it. Yeah, it's not well, 100 proof is 190. It's not 190 proof. It's it's 100 proof, which you can't have. This is 40. Well, it's no, it's, it's, it's 190 proof, which is really like almost 100 percent alcohol. This is of 40 percent alcohol, so this would be 20 proof. Wait, or 80 proof. Say that again. 80 yeah. proof. 80 proof. 80, yeah. yeah. I know what I'm doing. I can do math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that old times two equation. It was like atheists to rocks all over Ooh. again. I I'm just getting everything backwards today. I guess. Fourth dimension J. Fourth dimensional Jake had a really good idea in the live chat. You must spray them with your cologne. Um, I have a couple <laughs> different kinds. My 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 favorite. I only got one little bottle with left. When I was over in Jabali in Dubai over in the United Arab Emirates, they have these souks and they have these perfume places, and you get this really nice uh, like uh, it's um, velvet made out of velvet, and they're like a case, and you have these little concentrated oils that you get that you can buy and they're like like two bucks a piece american and they're like concentrated jacar nor they're concentrated obsession uh there's and i bought bazooka's amount of this stuff but i gave them away as gifts and then this was like what 20 th plus years ago i have one bottle left and i'm pretty sure it's jacar nor and i'm saving that for like the ultimate you know best day of my life so um i might we i might even take it with me on a special about. trip that i'm heading to but uh uh, that that little bottle is all I have left, and it's that's my is it. Clone. It's still potent and everything. Like I haven't opened it. I haven't. Uh, oh, okay. I know it's got stuff in it. I was just thinking, like, what? How does perfume spoil? Like, I don't think it would spoil. It ages what, well. Hey, a lot of perfumes, especially colognes, age really well, especially if it's if it's made um, like with actual oils. Right. Like I, I've 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 smelled the I've smelled the like a Sierra cologne. That was literally like it was 50 years old and it was just phenomenal like i could right oh my God. i still have dreams about that smell because it was so good it's uh, so good well now we know what you dream about that's kind of cool now nikki, <laughs> now nikki would you want steve to spray it with cologne or just like rub it on his armpits i'm i'm, I'm a bad 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 liar by the way it was not it was about rain i'm so sorry Bahrain, not Jabali. Forgive me, my troll fans, people out there. Forgive me, I have lied. I'm um, doing three responses. So, <laughs> yeah, so this this is uh, Istra Carnor. That is old as can be. That is all I have left of it. But it's, it's well, I found out later you're actually supposed to mix it with water. <laughs> but I just put a dab on, and it lasts like two days. It's it's so got, really this bad. is the, this is the actual concentrate they use for the actual. From what I understand, the actual um, Jakar. Nor, but if even if not, it is potent as can be, and I can just smell it just by opening it. Like, oh yeah. what does it smell like? Jacar Nor. What? How do you describe Jacar Nor? Smells describe like cologne. Jacar Nor well, is the greatest cologne ever. That's my favorite. I mean, does it smell earthy? Is it more fruity? Like, what's the uh, general profile of it? Oh man, uh, that's more of a citrus. I, I don't even know. It's 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 a very uh, it's a very light musk. Um, it's yeah, very, you go. it's like, it's like yeah. a bit of a spice to it. Yeah. It's got, yeah. Spicy. Okay. Yes. It, it's, okay. it's just smells, smells manly. It smells right. like fresh. Yeah. It smells like, you know, Hey, you know, uh, just your God kind of thing. This is like <laughs> the ambrosia of, I, I mean, this stuff's not cheap. Uh, normally, uh, Jakarnor. 
Yeah, but I love it. Smells it. like lumberjacks and pancakes. There you go. That's a good way of putting it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pancakes smells like, are not manly, okay? Yeah, They're smells like, it smells like How balls, dare you? It smells like ball sack and, and, and lobster. Yeah. I think she wants to fight, Ethan. I think she's ready to fight. <laughs> uh, she would win. Obsession's really good, so. too. I like Obsession for men. I have I have pretty broad shoulders. I think I could. Yeah, oh, you could take me. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Somebody say Dakar Noah's probably probably lower lower end stuff nowadays. This might be true, but again, this is like I got this in nineteen ninety three, maybe ninety two. So it's... you said eighteen ninety what? <laughs> it's still, it's, you know, it's funny. It's still, it still has the oil on the outside. You can still feel it oily. I, I think he means the the correct time for when Mikey actually had gain. Oh! 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 Get yes! Oh! You guys, you guys, you guys need a game uh, off. At Damn. two brute? Damn! Can somebody call the burn clinic? We have an injury. We need ointment. <laughs> stat. Need some aloe. Chris, you need to carry around a mic that you just dropped. He might like, need a skin graft. Just for like that put one, it on your actually. desk and like you say something and just. Why are you so salty today, Chris? Chris is a little spicy today. Dude, I'm always spicy. This is always spicy. I'm always I'm always spicy. spicy. He's got quips for days. I like that he's got wind in his hair. Like it like it's mm. literally like he's like I don't know, in a commercial right now. Yeah, he's up. I, I said that. Yeah, I, I actually see it blowing, yeah. He's in a so Pantene what, what, Pro V commercial. He doesn't even have a fan on him. It's just naturally, there's just wind always blowing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a permanent effect of his hair. Yeah. So you know really where Old Spice is, uh, is that I, brute? I, I misspoke. Chris would be in a Selsun Blue commercial. My bad. <laughs> oh, um, Selsun Blue. Motherfucker. <laughs> Mikey, what do you, what I, I, do you I like wear? to see Chris in an Old Spice commercial. Old Spice? I, like, I used to like Old Spice. Don't be, I, I, people bashing Old Spice. That was my dad's stuff that I used to wear. Old, old, old Spice That's is good so, stuff. Oh yeah. my gosh, it still smells so good. I wear brute Kenneth Cole Black. What do you? Oh, no, Kenneth Cole Black. I, I, yeah, I. That's that smells good. It's nice and light, but still very manly. Yeah, no, I've, 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 no. I've I didn't, I didn't have Kenneth Cole Black, but when it worked at Coles, we, we sold that. Uh, that I was nice. That. I like that one. And then the what's it called? Uh, uh, Old Spice is dope. Cur, curve Crush. <laughs> curve. Oh my gosh, I remember Curve. I yeah, when I was, I that like, was my old working. joint. Is that yeah, that was, that's my old joint. Like if I'm yeah. going out, I was fucking. My, man, crush me up, bro. Let's crush. do this. I like Axe. Oh but, uh, so women, are the, my favorite perfume for women. Axe. Yeah, I like Axe. Sorry, oh whatever. no, Axe. No Axe. Axe is I, I, deodorant. Like, that's not I a, like a cologne. Well, yeah, it's true. Okay, fair right point. Smell. Do not wear Axe. Um, Axe is the, the, the the my favorite that's for women. I really like Obsession for women. That is really, really good. Uh, no, poison Tommy is not bad is either. If you is that the one by Beyonce? Oh, I don't remember. P poison no, is pretty good. Is the best. I think it's that's the one, one that Lions really like. The, the only one if I didn't you, like. Um, don't don't get Chanel number no. five. That don't that, mm -mm. that that smells like jasmine or something. It's just unless you're no, unless you're Tommy yeah. If you're under the age of eighty, pants. don't don't get Chanel number no. five in my pants. Can I Tommy girl? Can I make a can I make a confession? Who's offering? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make a confession. The best okay. scent on a woman is honestly like a little bit of sweat. Women, I, I, I think the best scent. On, so I think the best scent on women men is anything I'm wearing. Women's favorite thing you've ever said. Your okay, name is on, Nikki. No, okay. I like women's sweat. Hold on, I have been wearing that thing all day. You know what? Nikki, I, doesn't, I, Nikki, Mikey, Nikki doesn't get to judge me. No, see, Mikey, Mikey. I got I, no, the best smell on a woman. Is desperation. There you go. Oh, I, I must smell. I must smell the best out of every woman you've ever met. In, like ever. The, the okay, best. The best scent is quivering yeah. anticipation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's you. We have three oh, feminists in here. I'm not going to make this out alive. I'm just telling you right here now. And... I, I had a friend in college. And... What part do you want, sweet? Uh, and her. Take his left friend. arm. She, her she boyfriend was, said that um, her his favorite time to go down on her was right after she was done jogging. And yeah, Mikey, no. I want to know if that is like because no. it to me, I was like, I it's not my thing. Yeah, the pH good. is all off. No, yeah. I'm good. Okay, so that's oh. too much. So it's more like, it's like a uh, listen, not like no, a like very much a no no for most women too. Like if we go exercising. We're not looking for that after. The, yeah. I mean, we're self-conscious normally right out of the shower. Never mind after sure. that. 
Oh, yeah. Forget it. <laughs> but Mikey, you're saying it's more of like a glisten thing, not like a yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope not God, so Mikey, like a... you, 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 you know, you, 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 you wash your balls every so often. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, do you really want to? I mean, I mean, what do you want to? Do you want a girl like taking care of you with nasty ball sweat? Fuck no. No, what are you saying? Demonetized. Said, okay, man. get that out of the way. Demonetized. Oh, by the way, everything <laughs> on the GDC has been demonetized lately. I don't even know why. It's not even been that bad. Um. Not That's bad for us, but, conversation. Yeah, not bad for yeah, us, YouTube, but man. bad for everyone else. YouTube and their monetization. I don't. Know. The last Are video on Trump bad. got demonetized. It's like really. Like last three, actually, the last three or four got demonetized on the Great. Debate. Oh, the one from yesterday. Yeah, all those got demonetized. Yeah, I figured. And confirmed. If I'm on the stream. Confirmed it's by demonetized. Manny Review. What? What? Nikki. If I'm on the stream, it's demonetized. Is we all know what I bring up. They I see mean. they see you, and when they do their manual review and go, I didn't love you. They just assume that I brought up something horrible and gross. So you know, to That's be fair, to be fair, it's you know. Okay, fair enough. I have an I, I have an idea. Yeah, it there's one million percent chance that it's going to be uh, demonetized, but the kink cast needs to happen. Yes. So what? What? Kink? When, where, and how? I don't know. If that <gasps> you guys see okay, Padme? If, if we had a kink, if we had a kink cast, that would be one of the most boring the things ever about? because he does not have a kink in his body. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's not. I don't have to talk. You're the most vanilla person in the entire. What the hell's kink cast? No, exactly. we have a cast. Exactly. We have a show. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Damn, Steve. Come on, man. <laughs> Pretend until you figure out is through context like you, you clues. That's what I always think. How do you if do that on YouTube? If it's a show about kinks, okay, I mm -hmm. I need to be in on it. Okay, wait. Yes, okay, absolutely. Come on. There's a re there's a reason Nikki likes snakes. I'll do it on my <laughs> channel. <laughs> I'll have Steve as a guest. Dude, awesome. I collect I collect kinks. I know of so many different kinks. I've posted. I've heard of so many different kinks. I could tell you so many different ones. In great detail. And, 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 and we want to hear all about it. I want to hear every little bit. Th that's, you the, will. The weirdest thing, though, <laughs> is, is the, the weirdest thing for me is that not that one person has a really bizarre kink. All of they them. always seem to find another person with that same kink. How? <laughs> because oh, everybody has weird. Oh, every okay. single person has a weird kink about themselves. If you think yeah, that you true. have a weird, gross kink, it's it's not just you. It's everybody. Find like-minded people and get together right. with them. Like for real. Like save sexual for, sexual health is just as important as mental health. Save Come it on. for the cast. Save it. Save some. You know, I did. I, I will agree with you. I did a show the other night with um, Unholy Sarah, and we talked about sex ed for like an hour. And I completely agree with you. I think sexual health um, is uh, is vital, and I think it creates healthy societies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree completely. Sex I mean, is good. It's, it, it's not just that though. It's it's when you when you meet another person who um who shares the strange, weird things that you think about and that you get off to, it's crass, but you know. Um, it, it can change your entire perspective. It really can. Like you you feel validated, you feel like you matter, you don't feel like a freak anymore, and you come out of your shell. You just find one person that is similar to you <laughs> in that way, then you know, the entire world opens up to you. I, I I'm That's saying this from personal fun. experience. So me so, and Nikki just yeah. started a new channel. It's called the King Pass. You can check it out every <laughs> Friday. Okay. By, the, actually, I got by the way, just FYI, I have, I have, I have, and chains ready. I have somebody right. complaining about Chris being sexist, by the way, just right now. Uh, mm. as, <laughs> as, as Chris is being sexist, who's a feminist, uh, because mm. of what, when I guess somebody, you just, you, you, you call somebody a name in the great debate community and now they're bitching to me about it. And I'm like, Oh, Al Alexandria uh -oh. could be, I can't, I'm not going to say who could be, <laughs> but what did like, you say? It's a, it's a, it's a group that everyone can join, and practically everyone in the chat's probably going to see it. Start. They start whining at me because, because they start comparing me to a Christian, and then they whined about, start whining about it when I insulted them, and then they okay. start accu falsely uh, accusing me of ad hominems. When I'm like, that's not actually what an ad hominem is, and it's right in I the. I told group him that, by the way. <laughs> like 
and it's actually a group rule. No falsely accusing people of fallacies. Okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, what... That's true. Did you call them a name, or did you infer that they well, were my, some... My That's what I'm is confused. My rule is no, this. I, yeah, I called them a, I, I call, I call them a bitch. My rule, my rule is this. Act, you, they're you acting could, like a snot. Well, hang on. You can call anybody you they're want. Gonna, I don't give a crap about it. My rule is this, though. If you're an this. admin, and, and if you're an admin and you're involved in the conversation, you should let somebody else mute. Don't don't because then it does it, it just looks bad if you're involved in a conversation and then you mute somebody. Now I'm going to mute anybody the fuck I want because it's my my group. <laughs> but, and people are going to give me shit for anyway, so I don't care. Welcome to my world. I get crap for that. But I don't. I, you, you don't need to get crap for, for muting people they, if you're in that conversation. Just ask somebody else to do it for you, right? No big yeah, deal. Yeah, tag me but, anytime. But, I don't, but you're I don't right. Mind. He you know he, he's like people. He called me a bitch and you know that's ad hom. I'm trying to explain if that's not ad hom. There's a difference between ad hom and a pejorative or invective. invective. An ad hom is a very specific type of fallacy. It's not just calling somebody a name. An ad hom is when you say, hey, biblical history skeptics is wrong because he kicks puppies. That's an ad hom because it's something personal against him that you're using to avoid whatever it is his argument is. It's not just avoiding the argument. If I just say, hey, biblical history, fuck you, you're a bitch, that's not an ad hom. That's just an insult. People need to understand the difference there. And I, I, I do my <laughs> damnedest to get people to understand that, but they don't want, they don't, they don't bother to go read any of this stuff. Steve, right. Are, are you telling me that people don't like it when you kick puppies? I, ah! I, I, puppies don't like it. Well, yeah, but I mean, they're puppies, whatever. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> for the for, and for the record, I asked Steve to come to my YouTube channel and kick my puppy. So oh, it's not like I never Steve kicked a puppy. I love puppy. It's kicker. not like Steve attacked yes. me. I was like, Steve, I, I have this puppy puppies. on YouTube. Please come kick it for me. And Steve. <laughs> No, I'm not the designated puppy kicker. What is wrong with you? So it was more like of a are, Steve. It was a, more of a punt. I'm, I'm, <laughs> right, exactly. Puppy bacon. Oh I'm, my god, I'm, I'm about to. Oh my god. I, Somebody I'm, in the live chat just said puppy bacon. I like cats. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it, wait, it doesn't, it doesn't show. Him as, I'm not a puppy person. It doesn't. Like, uh, it doesn't show him as muted. I, I told him I'd unmute him, but it, it doesn't show I'm him a puppy. as muted. I, 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 I wish. Okay. First of all, no. First of all, choosing sides in cat versus dog person, okay, that's dumb. Okay, both animals are amazing. Don't 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 at me about this. Okay, I like both. Like it, for it makes no sense. Cat, dogs are amazing. Cats are amazing. Quit being a jackass. Like yeah, yeah. There you go, Mikey. Quit being a jackass. Sorry. Plenty of love to go around. Oh, uh, I, 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 I. I it got buried, so I didn't I catch it till later on. I guess Chris wants to have a discussion on chivalry one of these days, which I think is going to be great. Uh, he asked me, but I, I it got buried, so I wasn't ignoring you. I was like, oh, I guess because I went to sleep. I, I, I also I also want to talk about Bible on here, and don't worry, I don't want to talk about Josephus or Tacitus. Tacitus. No, no Tacitus, no Josephus. <laughs> I know you love those topics. Never again. Like you love them almost as much as you like talking with Kent Hovind. Learned I will lesson. talk to Ken Hoven way more than I will about Tus to just <laughs> uh, Rattles your moves, uh, Jasmine. I love her. We love Jasmine. Um, she needs to come in here. Uh, crotch sweat is generally Funny. nasty because of skin folds and tight clothing is breeding ground for bacteria. Not a natural sheen of sweat. Thank you for that image. Uh, yeah, thank thank you for for that. Uh, probably didn't have to go that deep, but yes. Fourth dimensional Jake two dollars rule number. If you can't, if you can think of it, there is porn for it. That's rule number. three. 34. 34. Yeah. Uh, two two thirty two five dollars. You need to be talking about how double seven is a woman now. We just kidding. Actually, Thor is a, a woman now too. I guess uh, Natalie Portman's playing Thor. Don't know how that's working. Sounds hot. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, she was in the original James too. Foster, first of all, first Thor of all, the female the version of Thor is something that has been conceived of and it has care. been in comics. I don't care. And she is hot Thank as fuck. Well, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, Jane. Natalie Portman as Thor is literally the perfect choice. She's, no, bla Portman she's, no, she's is... no Black Widow. She's no, uh, you know. Uh, okay, yeah, here's my issue. She's a different Johansson. kind of beautiful than those people. But yes. Scarlett Johansson, Johansson is he humanly hot. Oh. <laughs> here's she's, my oh, issue. She might be alien. You ever, see the, you ever see the movie Species? <laughs> I have seen the movie Species. Oh Possible. Yes. Not saying here's my alien, issue, though. I I alien. love Thor. Okay, I've loved like when I was a kid, Thor was like my Superman. I love Thor. <sighs> my issue with Natalie Portman <laughs> is that I wish they had picked a younger actress. Oh my god! Ageist, you ageist. Not for the reason that you think. Give me a second. <laughs> 
No, we just have to jump on it. He's More crazy. outrage, sorry. I, I wish that they had picked a younger actri actress because I wish that it had been more of a passing the torch kind of thing. And I don't like, I don't like the idea of him like passing it to his former lover. I just feel like that's a little contrived, but that's okay. literally the only like that. That's why I don't like that. Okay. Um, but I like, I love Natalie Portman. Okay. Like, like when she was in the Phantom Menace, like oh. there was like a year where like I was in love with Natalie Portman. I don't care. And um, so I love I love Natalie Portman in the role. I just wish that it had been more. You of love a, the younger Natalie Portman because you don't appreciate the fact that women age. Like no, yeah, exactly. Do with, see, no, what we're right. saying is I wish we're going to dog on of the three, three feminists in the room here. I I'm not going to piss them, them off. No, no that's not what I'm fine. You know I agree. I understand what he's saying. I don't think there's a problem with that. Yeah. Hashtag drop the show. No, shovel. yeah, I, you won me over with that. But um, at the same time, it's like if we were to actually get like a gender bent one, I would want like um, uh, Mila Kunis to be Loki. That would be so hot. That Mila would be great. <laughs> and I was really hoping to be Valkyrie. Oh, like I thought that they were setting up Valkyrie to be Lady Thor. I think and so I think that part of it is that. Like I was really excited about Valkyrie Isn't taking over. And so now? I think. Huh? They're all gay. She's gonna be the the newest um, gay character in the MCU. Yes, is she gay yeah. or is she? Which bisexual? is cool. I just I liked the idea of her being Lady Thor. That's all, and I think that's uh, part of it too. I think I'm just disappointed that well, we're not getting I'm a, a gay Lady ignorant. Thor. Can you explain exactly what Lady Thor is? Like, what what is that character? Okay, so Thor is whomever wields Mjolnir. If you wield Mjolnir, you are Thor. Whoever it, right? it, so, it decides worthy enough to do so. Right. So technically, Captain America was Thor at the end of Endgame. Sorry, spoilers if you haven't seen it. What? Uh, I should oh, uh, now oh, we have to put man. that like, in the title. The internet, <laughs> right, I know. I'm a dick. Fuck I'm sorry. you. Fuck you. But, but um, I know. I spoiled three seconds of the movie. Oh, my God. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> The best three seconds. So anybody that wields <laughs> the hammer is is Thor. Technically. So so sorry. Who is Thor when he's not Thor? Then um Thor. shit. What's his name? Thor. Um. Oh my god. Oh oh my god. He's, uh, he's non Thor. He's not <laughs> Thor. No, in the comics he has a name. <laughs> Because he has an alter ego in the comics. Okay, let well, me see. Let me see. Right. This is why we have Google this nowadays. Obviously, this TV is not Thor this TV is without Yeah, Mike, yeah we, we know his name is Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth yeah, is that's, no. that's not his character well, name. Where's Ocean? We need Ocean for this conversation. Yeah, this is his, this is his oh. deity. You should know. Yeah. Jesus. Somebody look it up. What uh, people go? No, I, I am. Know. No, but that's the thing. Me. The comics don't necessarily follow actual mythology, so you can't no. really. No, no not at all. Look no, at one, no. and the other one. Well, and so the movies don't so always movie. follow the comics. No, yeah. exactly right. So that's why I'm asking because I'm not well, as I mean, familiar. Donald, get, like by the way, Donald Blake, Blake. Like writing Batman. Donald so who's Blake. Robin? Like, there's been a whole bunch of different Robins, and Batman is written differently. So to say to and ask. Yeah. Did you get that, Thor, Ethan? I mean, Did he's me? been a Marvel character since like the '60s, mm. so it just kind of depends on which one you're reading. Did, did you Did you hear me, um, Ethan? Donald Blake. Donald Blake is Blake. Donald about, Blake. Yeah. Thank you. Took so me all two Thor seconds movie, to look that up, Nikki. Hey, I couldn't movie, find it. I don't know. I was Google literally on well. Google. You could see the lights in my face. I, I Google. I go, I'm a Googler. Earth, I Google all the time. Um, no, I'm not a big fan of Googling. I think there's better services out there. Yes. Um, when he comes to her, Google like, me anytime. Meeting at Doctor Blake and gives him her boyfriend's jacket or coat or something, and it's got Blake on the name tag in the first Thor movie. It's a little inside joke, you know. Unless you were looking for it, you wouldn't have seen it. But so Thor is not a title. Someone says, right? But Thor his actual Thor. I mean, the actual son of Odin is a person on his own. Or a god on his own. That's mythology versus the comics. It, it's the two different things. You can't explain, Ocean the, will... explain them both in five words. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Ocean will t can tell you about the real Thor. I can just tell you about what happens in yeah. the comics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Really right. quick, really quick. While we're on comics, can I just really quick just say, um, 
the uh, Spider-Man Into the Multiverse is on Netflix, and it is an amazing movie. Okay, yeah, I just watched it the has movie. it has almost every yeah. single animation style they could possibly think of. The animation, the art, it is literally art. It is a beautiful movie. Watch it. It's on Netflix. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So, so Pat Natalie Port was in the first two seasons. She had a, a thing with the Thor, and in the comic strip, Jane Foster has a, a was the nurse of the doctor, Doctor Blake. Um, and I found I just read this, so um, I guess. And there really was good. a comic series in which Jane Foster was Thor. Yeah. So there you go. Yes. So yeah. that's why they're doing it at, with the movie. That's why they're bringing her character back. Uh, as I mean, I get Thor. that. I just that wish. I just wish they made a different decision. I mean, it's far. I'm gonna love it. Like, I know by the yeah. time it comes out, I'm gonna love it, and I'm gonna go watch it three times. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if that's your biggest yeah. complaint, Natalie Portman, I mean, have you no seen what they do? There's always gonna be some people who love it, some people who wish it was something different. Oh, yeah. Sure. Exactly. But has he seen Star Wars, the original, the first three? I mean, if that's your biggest complaint about Natalie Portman, because those sucked. Um, oh, I was, not, I, I, was yeah. I was not a fan of Star Wars at all. The yeah. Three? No. I wish I wish Star the, Wars the actual first three of the series, not the first three that came Steve, out. The... My hat is a joke. It says pew. Well, he, didn't, he didn't just do that though. Three. Like, okay, oh, so. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate Star Wars. This is an I hate Star Wars hat. Good. Well, I, mean, I, I no, I like the I like the 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 fourth one, Star Wars Four: A, a New Hope. Uh, but that was because I was there when it came out, which was like in seventy eight. Uh, I, I mean, that was Star, that to me was Star Wars. The 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 first three that they did when they uh, the, when they did one two or three well afterwards I don't know what the hell they were thinking it made no sense to me it just no. it, it was not well done uh, one two and three is what happens when George Lucas gets unlimited uh, creative control mm. for the original trilogy there were people who could say no George that's stupid we're not doing that no one's well, going to well, you for that Star Wars was saved in the edit I mean it was, well, an, that too, it was yeah. awfully put together and the editor saved it I mean yeah yeah. And I mean, I, I like I like Disney, the idea of yeah. a female Thor, but I, it'll be interesting that. where they go with the character. Hey, I, guess, I was are all... they just done with Chris Hemsworth? Is he just not going to be Thor anymore? Yeah, yeah I, think I mean that's what happened expired, in the comics. He's got one more movie that he. I haven't seen either of the new movies. I was so, I was all but... for you know uh, a female Doctor Who when when um sure. when, when she when, but I, I would be done for a female Doctor but, Who but, if they would have written it correctly. Exactly. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. She's a good actress, it's but the, but the writing was crap this season. Five out of the yeah. worst, se- out of the top ten Doctor Who's that people didn't like, five of them were from last season. It was just yeah. horrific. I'll be uh, honest. Not just the female one, the old one too. The one that was supposed to be like, I mean, when you look at you, when you look at the way the Doctor Who is made, um, he was supposed to be the evil version of the Doctor or whatever. Um, I I know very little about it. I, I watched. You t- you're talking about War it, Doctor. But- what? Which which? Oh, 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 oh no! You're talking. So you're talking about the 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 master. Yeah, the older no, the older one, the 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 not the female one, the old. The old master. master. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was su- he was supposed to be the evil version of our doctor. Yeah. Because apparently they all go through it, and that was the last iteration of his, um, of his lifespan, and he was supposed to be the evil one. You were supposed to see a whole new perspective on him but instead we just got poor writing and pandering from the director i guess and then this female version is just a response to all the people bitching mm-hmm. that there hasn't been a female and I, uh, doctor and, I, the, the, and i'm fine i would have been fine with a female doctor but they made that whole, the last seasons or so have all been pc it's all been, it, it been they've been shit and i'm sorry for, for uh, it's me um jody whitaker is a great actress i watched her if we were watched her and it was broad church yeah. And uh, uh, most of the other line. Good show. Yeah, Broad Church is amazing. She was in uh, something. Oh man, she, I can't remember the name of the show, but uh, she can act. I mean, she's a brilliant actress. But the oh, yeah. writing was just so bad, and they distanced themselves from what the, the viewers wanted. The viewers wanted lore. The viewers wanted. They liked yeah. the the old stuff. They didn't want too many new monsters, and and, and they didn't. They want things explained. The the best seasons was like with Brian, uh, uh, Tennant, David Tennant, where it got really in myopic detail about you know uh, Gallifrey and it got about his relationship to the master that's what I watched the show for none of that was in the last season it hey, was just uh, dry as let's, shit let's not forget about some of the other great times of Doctor Who though before Ten, like when the doctor accidentally got engaged to a Mayan woman 
is the that, second was, ever cereal. Was, was that was like I was gonna say that was like was that Petri? No, that was heart. Uh, heart, heart, no. heart, heart okay. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was black. Was that that was black and white? <laughs> yes, it was, but it was still a really good cereal. Uh, fourth dimensional, Jake, two dollars. You're mixing a mythology and mythology comic slash religion. Yeah, I think I think so. Uh, and we're talking about Thor. The Norse mythology mixed with what? What? They're talking yeah, about I mean, Thor. Said yeah. Like right? the, the mythology of Thor is completely different than yeah, Thor yeah. in the comics. Like it's yeah. not yeah. they aren't the same thing. Arado's your muse, two dollars. Like Jesus was an Avenger though. Like I that would be like... amazing. <laughs> Uh, she yeah, says, I'm more of a Trekkie than in Star Wars. Me too. I am definitely more Star Trek than Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, go uh, watch my channel, obviously. I, you can tell which one I'm I like I'm a huge more. Trekkie fan. Yeah. Well, um, I really like Star Trek. I have not been a big fan of Discovery. Ne- I neither have I. It might be good. It's gotten better. It's gotten better. I'll give you that. Yeah. But... I'm gonna do... It's still not as good as the Orville. No, no I, I got somebody. That one. Orville's better. I've got somebody in the community who. Somebody in the chat movie. just said uh, McFarland just moved it over to Hulu because the next season three wasn't going to yep. be ready in time because he's, yes. he's amping it up a bunch. Yep, that's true. I love the way. For, I, love I, the, I can't even imagine what that means because it's pretty high I, I budget. I like the way he, he, he integrates uh, his own personal. Uh, he, for example, he's a big into into like orchestras and big music. And that, and that they had an episode where they had a band come in and play, and that was all written for all that. And I thought that was just awesome. I mean, oh yeah, he's, he's, he, I like the way he incorporates a lot of that stuff. Yeah. What I really appreciate about the or- about the Orville is that it's actually telling interesting sci-fi stories in a way that Star Trek used to. Yep. Like like the episode where there's the question about like, do we do like the the gender change surgery on? The- that was good. Born girl. Yeah, yeah that was like, a great episode. Yeah, yeah. This is an yeah, yeah. actual, interesting, moral. That's how you do social question. commentary. That's how yeah. you do it. How they did it. Yeah. That was brilliant. And then they did a very like good job. Good guy or a bad guy. It's not like you can say, oh, well, you know, Clyden's obviously just the evil one. It's like, well, is he? I mean, he has some decent arguments. Like, yeah, she'll be ostracized by her entire society. Maybe not the greatest way to grow up. And the and, thing is, they're all well intentioned. They're all coming from a place of they're trying to do what's right and best for somebody else. Right. And that yeah. somebody's right, somebody's wrong. But in their hearts, they're nobody's trying to do a mean or bad thing, except yeah. maybe some of the people that kind of realize it's bullshit and they push it anyway just because it's a status quo. And that's the great conundrum. And that's what I love about that show. Yeah. yeah. That, really that was, even the so villains are not very really villainous, right? Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, the executive producer of the Orville was also producer, writer, or whatnot on on uh, Next Generation and Voyager. Yep, Brian Braga or Bren something Braga or something yeah. like that. Yeah, Brandon yeah. Braga. Yeah. Brendan. Okay. The, the only, Brand, the only I complaint Brandon. that I have is, is, is the same complaint that I have with any of the Star Trek series for the most part. They're all. I think every one of them is very episodic and I, I like that formula to a degree, uh, you know, but the problem with episodic epi- things is that they're formulated and I like more of an arc, right? I mean, Deep Space Nine had a good arc. Right. Yeah. Deep Space Nine was one of the bigger exceptions. They were still, you know, episodic, but they weren't the same way. Like in, in Next Generation, you had you had a, a problem, you had conflict, you had a resolution. It was very formulated in almost every episode, right? The Good Place has had a really interesting arc so far. Those are well, Good Place has a massive arcs. So, I mean, they they also have arcs in arcs, and they have an arc from the beginning to the end, obviously. Yeah. Um, have, I have no spoilers, but if you haven't seen The Good Place, best best ser- series out there right now. Oh, it's, it's, speaking it's, of Star Trek, I just saw one of the few instances of de aging that I actually appreciate. It's in the trailer for Picard where they de aged uh, Brent Spiner. Because oh, use a computer. It actually makes sense hmm. because if you look at Brent Spiner now, and you're like, okay, he dyes hair black and you put on that makeup, he's still not going to. Yeah, look well, like they Dana. did that with they just, they, they, they oh. did the de aging thing with um, Captain America. Oh, can we Captain yeah, Marvel? Yeah, here's. Here's the thing with Data, though. Um, there's an episode where Data says that he's programmed to age, like because I forget what happens. Maybe it's the final episode, but it's a time they warp go... episode. Well, in that one, he just gets a skunk stripe in his hair, and that's yeah. it. I, I know, but I'm just saying they didn't. It's too much makeup on Brent. Like I, I'm. Well, it's I mean, my they one asked me to do it, but I turned him down. Like I loved everything about the trailer. Literally, my only problem was there was too much makeup on Data. That's it. Do you, think there, do you think there's suddenly too much makeup on data or do you think that you're just not used to seeing it filmed in like super no HD? no literally oh, like yeah, his cheeks are be. puffy like i'm being literal like they, they had too oh. much of it on him like 
His cheeks look weird. His cheeks. I look haven't seen it yet. Like, so I'm, not, I'm, just asking. I'm not sure how much of that is makeup though, and how much of that is just the digital thing. Which is, if it's mostly the digital, yeah. that's the kind of thing that they can just tone down before it actually goes. That's that's, that's a good point. I don't know. His my, my his, only concern with Picard is he, the guy's old. How I mean, what happens if he dies in the middle of filming? Who Brent Spiner? No, no. Um, oh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Don't yeah. you ever yeah, say that out loud again. Him. Right. He's never gonna die. No, they'll, right. they'll, they'll, gra- they'll just grand Moff Tarkin him. Yeah, Spock wasn't gonna supposed to die yeah. either, right? Leonard Nimoy was supposed to die. We out- William Shatner outlived Leonard Nimoy. Figure that one out. Uh, what is wrong I with mean, this world? Assholes he, never die. Wait, isn't Shatner younger though? Like a year, I think, or something. Oh, I thought he was significantly oh, younger. How old so. is George Takei? He's like a thousand years uh. old. Yeah, Aww. he's exactly a thousand. I think he turned a thousand. Yeah, well, why would you want George Decay to die before William Shatner? I, I don't just want any of them to die, but it's going to happen eventually. Uh, George is uh, eighty-two years old. Although it's really sad. Oh, that Nicole, Nicole Nichols is eighty-six. William Shatner's eighty-eight. No. Oh, eighty-eight. Are you serious? Wow. I mean, Shatner's most people live in their hundreds, and they're famous. But That's not like he's eighty. That is actually pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh my. Didn't he have a wild, like, younger years? Like, how did didn't that? Yeah, how did he avoid <laughs> this? <laughs> same way, same, okay, same way with Keith Richards. Richards yeah. you know? well, Maybe I, the Jones now will I, actually preserve some people. I think, so, right. I, I think Keith Richards died ages ago. He just hasn't been really aware of it yet. <laughs> All right, so, oh, you know who might like drop Paul soon? McCartney. Who? Um. Uh, <laughs> really, you don't say. <laughs> right? Really, yeah. I, 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 I um, so, but yeah. it. Yeah, the guy who plays it, Rocky Horror Picture Show. He's like my favorite actor. I don't know why I can't think of his uh, name. Tim Curry? Jim, Tim Curry? Yes, Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Oh, okay. He had dead. a stroke recently, like a couple of years ago. Yeah. He was wheelchair bound, oh. unfortunately. Yeah. So Leonard Nimoy would have been the same age. He was been 88, too, by the way. Oh. I was able to see him live on uh, Spam a lot, and it was fucking amazing. I love Tim Curry. Tim Curry's wow. Oh, you know, I... Robin Williams would have been 68 today. Oh. Don't talk to me about Robin Williams. Now we're I'm just saying. I, I will down. literally start crying <laughs> live on stream right now. Let's because see what else of, we can talk about who's died. Because of Robert Williams. I love like, this. DeForest there's Kelly. layers to that, man. Just a there. weird old man. DeForest Kelly. There you go. There's one we don't have to be too sad about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Why? When, when you, when you say that it would have been that, that he would have been that age today, do you mean that today was his birthday? Yeah, or it was either today or yesterday. It was one of the two. It was, it was oh. yeah, I think it might have been yesterday, but I, I saw it was yesterday. Something means yeah. floating around. Mm. So another I, drink for Robin. I get, yes. So I get into this a lot sometimes, like on my Facebook. Anytime, anytime Robin Williams is brought up, I always have to mention this. So Robin Williams had depression like his entire life. Um, a lot of different like mental illnesses. I don't know the exact specifications on it. I just know that he had a lot of depression and he used to drink and he did drugs for a little bit and all that stuff. And he fixed his entire life to try and cope with his depression and his suicidal ideation. And it still got him. He stopped drinking. He went out more. He took medication. He was going to therapy and he still killed himself when he was old. And like, I have suicidal ideation. I have Depress, uh, depression, anxiety, all this other stuff. And it's just, it's it's so sad to think that he did all of the steps right and he right. still succumbed to it. No, no. But I mean, it, it really it really just shows you that, um, that this, you can't undervalue a support group. You can't undervalue all of this help because he still survived. Well, I, I think America How many has, years? America 30 has years? one of the worst like, track records for mental health. Um, yeah. on the planet we could be doing so much more and we don't yeah. and again i'm not a big i'm not a big liberal i'm not a big social justice person and i'm not a big advocate you know activist but when it comes to mental health even i can recognize that we we have shit services for it the va finally had to recognize that with military personnel and they they put they, they put in whole new programs and they redid a lot with the va because the suicide rate for um for yeah, veterans veteran suicide was ridiculous crazy now i didn't suffer for any of that I, I i never had a problem with that uh but you know i did have times where uh, anybody who's been in the military anybody acclimating to civilian life after being in and it is a form of indoctrination for for, for that time period even though six years doesn't sound like a long time it requires reacclimation 
It and really it feels like a does. long time while you're doing it. And, and, and when you, okay, first time, you when you got out of boot camp, because Dapper was a nuke as well, so he knows firsthand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. When you, 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 your first time you were able to wear civvies again, and you were on Liberty, did, did the world feel different to you? Yeah, I, I didn't know how to do things. Like, I was like, all right, is there a particular route I have to walk? Do I have to take six inch or whatever it was? Do I have to salute that squirrel? I mean, right. well, yeah, like, it's just oh. bizarre. It feels different. The world feels yeah. actually different. Admiral Siegel, at your leave, sir. Actually, I remember <laughs> there was um my I was visiting or no my my family was visiting, and we were off to go I think to see some movie or whatever, but they decided to cut across the grass, and I was oh. and they're like, oh, okay, come on, and I was like, no, I can't do that. Like, why not? I was like, because there's a sidewalk. I have to follow the sidewalk. What are you talking about? I can't just cut across the grass. And like, well, you can, though. I was like, nope, mm -mm, not going to happen. And I walked around the sidewalk. It's conditioning. It is mental conditioning in the military. There's no question about it. They break you down to build you up. It is a psychological conditioning. And I don't got a problem with it. No, I'm not condemning it. I would say it it probably counts as brainwashing. Whether or not you're okay with that is a separate thing. It technically would be a a form. It's conditioning. It's mental conditioning for sure. I mean, they do a lot of the same things that, like, cults do in order to get compliance and the kind of behavior that they expect. Yep. Now, you can argue that they have a better goal than most cults, okay, but and, it's, and less there's carrot, a lot of similarity. Like, they have carrot and stick approach, though, still, too, though. Yeah, but I mean, like, okay, so both cults and boot camp do things like restrict how much you can talk to family and friends. Isolation. Uh, restrict where you can go, limit sleep. Uh, Brain renovation. You know, they they tend not yeah they they tend not to limit calorie intake which a lot of cults do but boot camp actually kind of seems to encourage like no eat a bunch you, just you, I gotta tell you I ate, like I ate very well in the navy uh, especially in boot camp uh, it, the, the rule of thumb is if you can shower down in twenty minutes have at it uh, yeah. you burn a lot of calories I I ate a lot I wouldn't say that I ate well though oh I like the food <laughs> eh, I mean but was the food good yeah it, I thought it was good. It was, when you look at, I mean, the government might have um, uh, a duty to protect the health, mental health of its citizens, but I feel like more so the people who are willing to go into the your military. Pro- your property, like, they, they have an investment in you. I mean, yeah. Dapper could tell you it, it cost a quarter of a million dollars to train a nuke. Oh, it was it was a ridiculous. A expense. quarter of a million dollars is, is the training that we have. There's a half a million dollars worth of training in this room right now. Yeah. So they have investment to that. They don't. They don't want you to, 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 to fuck up and wash out or, well, or to do something stupid. And plus, when it comes to the mental health for veterans, things, I feel like that should be an especial priority because basically, um, it, it's kind of one of those things like you broke it, you bought it. Military, yes. you're obviously breaking people. You you got to take care of that. The, I mean, the problem with that is, is even if they did prioritize. And and give uh, mental health care to vets at a more reasonable rate. Uh, the mental health care that's available is spotty, right? There's well, there's a lot of ever, ever approaches has that not all are made equal, and there's not a lot of agreement. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that the treatment for pretty much everything was just like Thorazine and electric shock. No, right? no, no. Like, it, yeah, well, yeah. it went for Thorazine and electric shock, but the big then it actually went to oxycodone. Yeah. Uh, and now it's yeah. kind of gone away from that. Now I was prescribed oxycodone from the VA many, 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 many years ago, but that was for back issues. I it, I found that it actually worked. It actually did alleviate the pain. I never got a buzz off it. Never got high. I didn't see how anybody could ever get addicted to it because I I would take one or two and it'd be the pain would be gone or subside for a while and a week would go by and I would take another one. So I never experienced anything relating to oxycodone um, withdrawals or anything because I never got addicted to it. Because I never had a, 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 one prescription lasted me a very, very long time because you took it as needed. Right. And so, but, but, but yeah, the VA is very, it. very pr- big on giving oxycodone or if was, I don't know if it is. Well, I been yeah. That's not really mental health therapy though. That's pain management, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's true. If you take yeah. People, no, people you use actually... opioids as a form of therapy. Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you not, undervalue when you undervalue the 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 help that like say a therapist would give you and stuff, I mean, just look at the percentage of the homeless people that are veterans. That's yeah. literally all you have to do. Like they literally they use these people, they use their bodies for a war machine, and then they throw them on the side of the road 
with all these new mental health issues. And then, and then what do they get? What do they get? They don't get anything. I just, yeah. And, and the, the way that the government the uses humans in a war machine disgusts me. No, I don't, I, 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 somebody's been in the military, I, I can give you pushback on it. I mean, there's reasons why the military does the way it, it does. I mean, there has to be a fighting force. There has to be a defense of the country. Um, uh, the, now, I do agree with the, the, the VA, people that they use, though. I well, mean, the, the VA, they, uh, well, God, it's getting better. I, again, I mean, going from the yeah, Vietnam era it to now, it's it's dramatic yeah. improvement. Yeah. And I got to admit, the VA now has has really revamped their shit. But I think what prodded them was actually, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a time where they had security problems and they they lost confidential information. I remember that. Yeah, and that was, I think that pushed them over the edge to say, okay, we're going to be looked at with a fine tooth comb here. And they knew they had to do something. Yeah, and then at the same time, you have to have people like John Stewart go out and plead with Congress just to get like health care for first. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you ridiculous. hear about Rand like, Paul? Don't I don't understand how that's even happening. Where it, like, first responders yeah. have been covered in the same thing as, as like a military for socialized medicine. Uh, I I mean, they, hold on, hold on. They were, and then after five years, they were like, "Well, we're just going to stop funding this." Yeah, yeah. yeah I, they tried to stop it, and like that—that that to me though that was crazy. Fly. Because like being from a place where we have health care, right? Uh, when people are like, "Oh, well, we don't have that here," I'm like, "Okay, well, that that yeah. might be whatever, but you should at least definitely have it for these people." But they like, tried to defund it, but I don't think they—I don't think they actually defunded it, Mikey. Did they? I think they still um, had some coverage. Every year, every year they had to go back and fight. They had to, fight for, they had to vote for it every year annually. After uh, okay. Yeah, it should have been just made a, a permanent measure, though, right? And this is the thing. It's been used, as as John Stewart put it, it was being used as a political football. And they had to come after rushing into a big cloud of God knows what, which is now in all of their lungs. They had to storm over to fucking D.C. and put their hat in their hand and say, can I please have some money for my respiratory therapy? Yeah, it's pretty and sad. And let's not forget that it was only a few days later when the government said the air was safe to breathe, when it, they knew it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question the government has done some fucked up things. I'm not going to defend otherwise. Um, and I've, I've been in the military where they've actually seen them lie. Uh, it does happen. I mean, nobody's, no, nobody thinks the, the government, government is going to tell the, the truth. The government lies? Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's what, <laughs> yeah! they, that's no. what they need to do. I, I, I don't think there's ethical problems there as long as the, the, what they're doing is for the greater good. However, some, some of the things that they do are not for the greater good. They're just bullshit lies, and, and the greater good is um, telling the truth. Man, I got to be have... careful, or my my apolitical dedication that I made in my my channel intro is going to be violated. Here. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of speaking of Dapper Dinosaur and his channel, it is time. For Flood me. him! Time. Flood his channel. Dude. Yes. Dapper Dino. Do you have more than four subs now, Dapper? He has such good content. Oh my god! I literally oh, I binge you. watched it for like eight hours the other day. Amazing. <laughs> All yeah, of his stuff is that. so good. I cannot undervalue that. She was yep. she was doing like the Molly short, like just like armor <laughs> and like actually while she, she watched was, all your videos. She was Vicky was sending me Facebook Stop. messages that were just quotes of mine for about a day or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. She I, was. Mean, I was I, I just I love it so much. I mean his his stuff is just so good, and um I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of um, science background. I, I actually grew up on Kent Hovind. So when people debate him and take down his arguments, it actually helps me learn. And Dapper was just very, very nice. And he broke down what dinosaurs were for me. It was, <laughs> it was a fun conversation. Yes, yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to and, kind of... uh, so now yeah, Nikki officially has... knows no, more about dinosaurs than Dr. Dino does. Well, that is Exactly, a lot. yeah. Which is very little so. Very little. <laughs> right, it's not a high bar to set, but... <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of the community that are really into dinosaurs. You, um, the, I have a friend uh, named uh, Chucky Darren who likes dinosaurs. Uh, we have uh, obviously Bill Ludlow. Um, oh yeah, yeah. actually, I, Bill Ludlow is not super into dinosaurs. He's a much bigger uh, human origins and also sure. a lot of stuff on um, like Paleozoic synapsids. So yeah. like um, you know, like early cynodonts or. Uh, things like that like he had the the tracks that he found that he's understandably very excited about are mostly um i think permian synapsid tracks if i remember correctly he he, he did a he did uh well i don't know if it was a video but he, he wrote to me 
when he when he was working on something like that. I didn't fully understand what he was talking about, but it sounded cool. Oh, well, so uh, interestingly, all of you horrible, disgusting mammals are synapses. Yeah, I went. Uh, that, that's I that's the it. that's the group that eventually yeah. led to mammals. Yeah, that it also includes famous things like Demetrodon, you know, the big sail-backed lizardy-looking thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Not a dinosaur. Actually, closer to um to any of the, the mammals out here. Yeah, I was watching a, something on one of the PBS channels the other day about that, about the animals that, like, if you look at them, they look very reptilian, but they're actually much closer uh, to mammals Right. back in the... Well, the reason a lot of uh, these early synapsids you would look at and say perhaps this seems like a, a reptile is because the, the modern reptiles that we see a lot are mostly things like lizards. And um, lizards are very karyotypic of kind of the... the basic amniote body plan they have sprawling limbs they're pentadactyl they have the um sort of the typical tetrapod uh jaw arrangement with several bones going back uh, whereas mammals only have one bone left in their lower jaw that actually functions as a jaw bone right and so because uh they have so many of these basal characteristics we get into our heads this idea that okay this is what a reptile looks like but if you go into the fossil record, there are a lot of reptiles that don't look very much like that. And there are also a lot of things that aren't reptiles that do look like that. So you can't tell reptile from the scales? Uh, no, no, you can't. Because lots of things probably had scales that aren't reptiles. There you go. I mean, even now today, there are fish that have scales. They're not reptiles, although they're different kinds of scales. But um, then you get into questions reptiles, like... Would, reptiles would still be a type of fish, though, if you want to go well, monophilitically. Mon mon I guess I was thinking of actinopterygian fish, which reptiles would not be actinopterygian fish. They'd be sarcopterygian fish. Sarcopterygian, yeah, uh, yeah. I need to interrupt that's... for one second. The, the, Dapper, the, 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 you're at the... 77. We need, we need like 23 <gasps> more people. I just posted people. his link Please. again. And oh, I'm going to post this yeah, letter. So look, 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 look who dropped in here, Jasmine. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Jasmine. Hello. Hello. You, 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 <laughs> Van Dan says, I'm a mammal with scales. You got here Van... late, but better late than never, right? I had this rash oh, one time, yeah. and I swear to God, I had scales. But I got a <laughs> cream for it. We're all good. <laughs> that was shingles, brother. Ooh. No, it's, <laughs> well, I think if that's it, called if eczema. It was, if it eczema. were shingles, you'd know, because yeah. you have far <laughs> yeah. more than just a rash. If, you, if, you, if you've had uh, chicken pox... Might get shingles. Chicken pox is scales. Think about no, it. No, it's not. Oh, God. <laughs> chicken so pox is herpes it, uh, simplex, and... Uh, Herpes zoster would be shingles. Yeah. So there, there actually, from a morphological standpoint, um, so the rashes that you get where you get quote unquote scaly, that's basically just a buildup of dead epidermis that kind of comes off in flakes. But um, scales actually have an interesting formation where there's actually this uh, structure called a placo that thickens on the skin of the embryonic developing, you know, reptile. And then that gets covered over with some keratin, but Interestingly, that's the same way that feathers start out. They start out with a placode, but the placode, because of uh, the re-expression of one particular gene, I don't remember which one it is, but it's a, uh, you know, it's a regulatory gene. They then form into a circle, which then sends up a hollow shaft that and eventually will become the rachis. So if you look at the um, kind of the embryonic development of feathers versus scales, you can actually see the uh, connection between those two structures. And it's also why we know that many of the things that you look at and say are scales on a bird's foot are actually feathers that have evolved to look like scales after having originally evolved from scales. When do I get a pet dragon? Interesting. Uh, you're probably just going to have to clone one yourself. I don't know. And you are the fucking bearer of bad news today. Man. I know. I'm sorry. I'll tell Nobody, you what. Though. Nobody's up. It doesn't work that way. None of it works that way. I just want a damn dragon. God damn it. Oh. Ask for Can we at least have a chicken dinosaur? <laughs> uh, well, Get a parakeet. Jack Horn is working on Also, I wanted to say one thing. Uh, Maya, who's one of my regular viewers, I promise if I get 100 subs, there will be a 100 sub live stream. Yay. There. Okay, it well, you're 18 away now. Day. We need 18 more people wow. to go oh, stuff good to die. I'm watching the counter. We got 200 live. people watching. Go give them 18 more subs for Pete's sake. Come on, people. Right? Yes. Uh, Gwen, yeah. I will repost his, his Twitter, his YouTube. Just I mean, unsub. Just, just, just unsub. Once nobody post everything. On, nobody post <laughs> nobody post anything but the link in the live chat. Link, link, link. For, for, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, for, until, 
Like, nobody could talk until he gets 100. <laughs> and nobody could chat until he gets 100. Can okay, no one say a word? Gwyn, Gwyn for $5 Wait. says, do you Just think... Give the audience the stare of sadness. He says, do you think... 85. The mental Hang on. He says, do you think the mental health service is more effective if it shows people how to manage their emotional reactions? 87. Like Marcus Aurelius instead of drugs. No, I think I think drugs are very effective for a lot of that stuff. 90, it, 91. It, it depends. I mean, I mean, I think that every single person in the entire world needs Two. some form of therapy. Because every single person needs to learn healthy coping mechanisms. Yeah, well, it's, it's to... not one or the other. It's a ninety-eight. Hold oh. on. Ooh, so close. Ninety-eight. Ninety-nine. Come oh, on, more. This, this is like edging. Mom, this is, this is like the, the equivalent of subscription oh, edging. Yeah. 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 Release. We have release. Yeah. Done. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys want, you can unsubscribe. But I will be doing a 100 sub stream uh, probably to not, tomorrow or the next day. I'm gonna have to figure out what works better. Yeah. Um, who's Steve? Come on. Who, 100 subs. Who's Steve? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, new channel. So, who this? New YouTube. New, sub, yeah. new so, subs. Who this? <laughs> I am feeling the love. So here's what my plan is. Um, I'm going to double check with like work schedules and everything, but by tomorrow afternoon, so I'll probably just have it on Tuesday. So by tomorrow afternoon, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let Steve know what my plan is for when we're going to have a hundred sub live stream on my channel. Okay. And then I, Steve, can you disseminate links to people who want to show up? Of course. I mean, anyone who you let on rum and coke night, I'm, I'm fine with having on. I, I, I'll, Sweet man, I'll get and congratulations, sure. brother! Thank you, I you really appreciate it. that. Uh, and also, outside of that, this week is going to be dedicated to animating my next video. It's going to use my new avatar, which you can see a slightly work in progress, but mostly finished version of, as my uh, my picture here on Zoom. Um, so look forward to that. I worked really hard on this avatar. I made it myself from a bunch of math. It's I. Right. So you, you made it when yeah. you're on meth. No, I made it out of math. Oh. You made it out of math. Are you saying that yes, you just really out generated a okay. dinosaur or? Uh, or what? So I did not procedurally generate a dinosaur, although it. Some of the detail that you're seeing is created via textures and not actual being there on 3D. I don't know if that counts. That's not that's cool. Cool. Oh, texture, so like texturing. You're, so you're is not talking like procedurally generated generate. textures, like. You, you okay. could you could have procedurally generated textures, but. Okay, okay we generated means that it's going to be generated on the fly as we as needed. Yeah, right, you got a right, match. right. So I have a request uh, from a puffalopagus. So first, uh, I actually I don't agree that there are no marine dinosaurs because I count penguins as marine dinosaurs. Ooh. So there you go. But uh, so the dumbest fucking dinosaurs. Well, <laughs> so but here, here's the thing that is a, a bit of a barrier for dinosaurs and being <laughs> aquatic. Uh, dinosaurs laid hard-shelled eggs, and it's very hard to get a uh, hard-shelled egg to then hatch inside the body, which is what most marine reptiles do that live all their lives at sea. So when you see things like fossils of ichthyosaurs giving live birth or modern sea snakes giving live birth, what they're actually doing is called oviviviparity, which means they retain the egg until after it hatches inside the female's body. Ooh. But, but if you do that with a hard-shelled egg, all you're going to do is get a severely injured internal body. Sharp as when, egg inside you. Right. You, you can't hatch a sharp, hard-shelled egg inside your body. It's not going to work out too well. So that's one of the big barriers to getting dinosaurs to be uh, aquatic. And so the closest thing that we have are probably spinosaurids that probably were semi-aquatic and things like penguins now or uh, waterfowl that aren't really aquatic, but they spend a lot of time on the water. But in all of these cases, they would still have to come onto land to lay their hard-shelled eggs. Just real quick, uh, Mikey, say something in the chat. If, if you want to wrench, I, you have to actually say something in the chat so I can... I've been in the chat. All right, I'll do it. it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't look very hard. <laughs> snake eggs are snake eggs aren't floppy they're uh they're soft they're leathery yeah so hard-shelled eggs are actually a pretty unique dinosaurian feature you even uh crocodile eggs and crocodiles are the closest things to dinosaurs that aren't dinosaurs that are still alive were uh leathery shelled and it even looks like pterosaur eggs which are even closer to dinosaurs than crocodiles are were also leathery so yeah it seems like the hard-shelled egg thing is just a dinosaur thing like no one else seems to do that outside of Dinosauria. 
Um, I the reason I said what I said about penguins is they live on literally the coldest place on the planet on fucking purpose. Yeah, I see. You, yeah, but hey. they're but they are so highly adapted that it literally does nothing. Like, There's also, literally is, better ways of going about life. There are tropical penguins. That's a thing. Those are the smart ones. Right. <laughs> right. They're like, they're but like, yeah, that's that is definitely that a thing. They live in the there. Galapagos and they just like hang out, like fucking <laughs> dancing to salsa music. They get some sardines. It's a good life. These motherfuckers are like, I'm gonna be four foot tall and live in like negative one billion degree temperature. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why would you do that on purpose? Just go up to the Galapagos with the rest of them. It's fine. Well, the the Galapagos penguins are already there. They're hogging up all the beachfront territory. But they're like fucking the size of a squirrel. Just kick them out of the way. Well, okay, yeah, but have you ever seen an Arctic penguin? They're just all fat. They're too lazy for that. Just fall on them. Oh, I guess that might work. Just smush them. Yeah. Make them in the jet. Actually, really interesting. A lot of times, um, penguins actually ride on underwater currents. So, like, there will be, like, an underwater wave underneath the ice, and that's actually how they, like, do that. Like jet They don't even swim right. They're just lazy. That's why they down. They're so fast. It's just... <laughs> It's just a lot of times when they get their speed up, it's because of like underwater waves. Mikey's really just dogging penguins. up penguins, man. Yeah, he just doesn't like penguins. I mean, I'm an, advoc- I'm an advocate for leopard seals. I always have been. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag Mikey kicks penguins. Sea otters are cute. <laughs> I'm not a penguin kicker, but I love leopard seals and they're hungry. So No, yeah, Mikey, I don't advocate cool. beating baby seals. Stop that. Oh. <laughs> the seal club? <laughs> Navy, Club baby seals? Navy seals doesn't mean to go around beating se- baby seals. No, I, oh, I got a, I got a terrible block. joke. So a baby seal walks into a club. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Padme, I swear to God. Come on, that's <laughs> All right, well, what? guys, we're wrapping. I mean, we're at two hours, and I, I want to. I usually wrap these up after two, so I, I and I'm hot as shit right now. I know Sweet's probably Ooh. dying. She's got to go to Fuck bed. Fuck yeah, you are. Dying. I'll say. <laughs> It's really warm. Sweet, it's really hot. Right 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 um, yeah. Speak lower and quietly into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are Steve. Yeah, you hot motherfucker. Oh my god, yeah. I was talking to Steve. Even oh, I'm Tell sorry. Me. <laughs> Tell me how much you really want it. I can really, really want it. Want Alt A mutes. <laughs> Alt A. All right, so. What do we got to hear as far as like other promotionals? Dapper's already promoted his shit. He's already broken 100. Anybody else got to? Yeah, yeah I got 105, I think. Uh, I have been... the serrated kiss. <laughs> and I talk about politics and Star Trek. And then three times a week I go live and I get people to come on my show and interview them like I'm actually a legitimate person. Uh, so you should come. Yeah, well, we're going to have a discussion on objective morality next time. Good. Mm. I want to, because I know, like when I made that video, I was like, I know this is wrong. Yeah, but, well, it's funny because you have you had people going, "This is awesome," and blah blah blah. And then you had one person tell you that you, they, they right. I don't remember what they said. But they said, "I think you messed up a little bit on and this." And you saw who got hearted, right? Mine. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I I knew that I was wrong, but did what yeah. I say make sense though? I mean, I, I did. Okay. Well, good. and see, here's the thing: like, as a political channel, I don't get to talk about atheism very much. So when Yang brought up atheism, I'm like, "Oh, this is perfect." And I've got I like that. Yeah, that was good. Right. So, and he also you said, know, you know, the it's atheists who believe God does not exist. He used the same, you know, the common right. understanding that I think is a lot more common than people think. And a lot of people think Yang is actually an atheist, but doesn't want to say that. Mm. So that's like, it's possible. I know. Oh, sorry. Maybe. I said, I know. It's possible. I've gotten some vibes from him about a few things that he said on religion. But he yeah. usually says, I'm a Christian in a really passive way. I know an atheist I'm... doesn't like to call himself an atheist because he doesn't like atheists i know a few people that don't like other atheists but i know people that uh you know they're just upset because they they learn over time that these organizations are not giving the straight dope and that right that that pissed them off because they expect these people that are activists to tell them the truth and i and there's an expectation when you're on the internet to make sure that the information you put out is accurate we all make mistakes we all fuck things up i'm correct all the time but people that know what the hell they're doing but I don't make those mistakes oh, yeah. again, right? I learn from them and I go, okay, right. Uh, yes. But when you have when you have an act uh, active uh, position where you're doing an activism of some kind and you have an agenda, you have an ideology, you, where you cannot be wrong. Then that's a problem because that to me is no different than the young with creationists. You're literally promoting what you want it to be rather than 
how it's actually done in field or thought of in field. And that's fine for you to do that. But then when you try to criticize people like myself or Ozzy or Burt Pohl or Alex Malpass or anybody like that who talk about these subjects, you can't fault us for actually putting out academic information. And the people that are saying that we're wrong about the academics, they're just flat out bullshit wrong. I mean, absolutely. They're, they're absolutely. Even, and it, we can't even have know, a conversation the at philosoph- that point because they're just so fundamentally wrong. Right. And it's the philosophical, like I was trying to bring up, I was trying to put out a definition that anyone could watch the video and understand what the hell I was talking about. But that I know that it's not the philosophical view of what objective morality is. Yeah. And I'm more interested in that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Dust. We're wrapping it up. Uh, yeah. No. The, the the best way, like I said, the word objective can be used differently in, in the literature itself. That's the reason why right. I think objective subjective distinctions are just they're just a quagmire of things. And I think mm-hmm. that unless you do talk to people that have, have have tried to navigate those waters, you're going to equivocate somewhere down the line. I see it happen all the time. In fact, I did two debates that I moderated on that topic. I maybe even three where the first thing we try to do to get them to, to have a debate on it is what is your uses of this word? Because there are so many different ways of using it and they never did have a meeting of the minds, but the, the, the normality of it, the, the um, normativity of, of objective morality has nothing to really do with mind independence per se. What it has to do with is, is it a fact is it a moral fact that we have access to other than an individual? I mean, if sweet says she has a headache, I can never access that fact, right? It might be an ontological fact, she has a headache, but is it is still a subjective fact because I can never validate that. I can never observe that fact and have access to it. I am epistemically off limit to that. Only she can experience that. But an objective fact is something we epistemically can know as a fact. That's where you get into uh, the epistemology of knowing what a moral fact is. Right. How do we know what a moral fact is? It's a completely different question. <laughs> but there are certain moral facts that I think we can objectively look at and say to anybody, given a certain conditions on what your grounding is, is an objective moral fact. It doesn't matter what people think because I, I use the analogy often, and I'll, and I'll wrap it up with this, only because this is a, a kind of a, a corresponding way of thinking of a moral fact. If I have an a, 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 a ontological fact, or I have a fact that's not a moral fact, and I say it's based upon something like a goal-driven, it's called a hypothetical syllogism, and I say it is my goal to win a foot race. And if it's, if it's my goal to win a foot race, I ought to run fast. That is a truism. It doesn't matter what people think about that. You, It is always going to be a true is if I want to run the race, I ought to run fast. Doesn't mean I will. Doesn't mean I won't cheat. Doesn't mean I might be able to do something else. But that I ought to run fast will always be something that will hold a conditional truth. Does that make sense? Because that there's no, no way that statement can be false. It does. Well, you can't. I won't spoil it here, but I have a way to challenge all of that, but we'll do okay. another hour if I bring it up. So I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, no, I, I, that I, would be an interesting yeah. exactly. I, I, I gotta, I, I'll tell you the best way. Then I'll leave you guys with this. If you want to learn a little bit about this kind of subject, all you got to do is go watch the bionic dances video and then do the complete opposite. <laughs> no. Whatever she says, that's the wrong way to do it straight up. <laughs> And she's sure. on, she's been on she's been on a kick dogging me lately, so that's why I bring her name back up because I don't give a fuck. I don't have to bees her any longer. She's an idiot. She's a straight up doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Okay, has no yeah. clue about any of this topic. She's never wanted to learn. She's never opened a book. Never read a paper. Is she, is she even a journalist? No, bionic <laughs> dan- dance, not Katie. Oh no, I think mean, she doesn't claim to be though. She doesn't claim to be a journalist. Bionic dance, no. Oh. No, no. Katie? It's it's a, Katie, 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 Katie throws that word journalist around. She. Oh, Katie. Yeah, Katie. Well, Katie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the look on your face when you when you said that. Yeah, sweetie. Yeah. sweetie, sweetie thinks, yeah, she thinks the world of of, of Katie. Mm. I I think Katie is just lovely. She's yes, she's the, honest in her evaluation. Very, of, <laughs> the due diligence she does isn't it impressive. Um, I mean uh, I mean I I love her her optimism that everything's just settled and. Uh, her, her her revisionism of what have happened in our, in our meetings was interesting as well because the people that were there don't recall it the way she does who wasn't there. Hmm. By the way, this is already been settled. We do have that. We, like that. we do have that video of that meeting. By the way, we just we we haven't released it yet, but you can see there's there's no lawyers in that meeting. So she's just outright wrong. Anyways, guys, thank you for, for joining us for the yeah. Rubber Coke Night. I'm going to go play <laughs> Ferris. Divinity 2. Uh, I'm going to have mindless, thanks for the subs. Most people have mindless things they do, whether it be reading, watch TV, have sex. I don't know. I'm just me. My mindless thing is going to play a game. So 
We all know what that mine is. Yeah, we How all are know. You know. You have to do a few of those things at the same time, and then you really That's know. my goal one day. God damn it. Now you know my inner fantasy, right? <laughs> I figure out a way right? to make those things work, you know? Sex and video games go so well together. I know. Who hasn't Who hasn't enjoyed you know, like having sex and raiding at the same time? When you're a healer... Excuse me? Wait, wait, when you're a healer in WoW and you're having sex at the same time, is there anything better? <laughs> really? Call me. I don't know. I haven't You're a serious I don't know healer. No, actually. I Clerics don't. are the natural bottom, by the way. Good night. It's a really interesting way of raiding. 